Greetings, everyone, <laughs> and welcome to a very special FUBAR edition <laughs> of <laughs> Monster Party. Monster Party. Monster Party. Monster Party. Monster Party. Monster Party. Oh, it's, it's the new year, and we're still the doing right. Monster Party. It's the future. What's wrong with us? Same, same. But we're all together, and we're doing. We we've decided. Fuck it. We're gonna keep doing <laughs> this. That's right. <laughs> How dare you think anything else? That's right. By the way, I am Matt Weinhold. I am Sean Sheridan. I'm Larry Stroth. And I'm James Gonis. Yes, you're. <laughs> was that your way? Was that your way of saying I'm no longer in the show? It's a anymore? dramatic pause. <laughs> Me? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it must have laughed. Uh, there must have been like a lapse. Oh, okay. Because all we your got judgment. on our end was a big gap of silence. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then what I did is I, I sort of in my mind put a sigh, a big deep. <laughs> Uh, oh shit! I'm James Gillis. <laughs> uh, do I have? Why to? am okay. I doing this for another year? <laughs> oh god! Ooh, who's uh, that mystery <laughs> voice? <laughs> and and oh, I'm James yeah, but look, Matt, Matt, it's the <laughs> yes, Larry, yes, get in on this. It's the new year. It's the new year. You know, it's it's the new year. Yes, and we're excited. Yeah, we're excited. And what better way to Bring in the new year with something fun and exciting yeah, for our crazy. Monster Party listeners. Something yeah. fun and something we intended to be <laughs> <laughs> like a topic that we've done before. Yeah. And so you already know what this topic is labeled. You've you've you know you've done all the research. Yes. You've basically read the description. <laughs> but what we're doing here is this show is a return to the topic free for all. Where, yes. we, where in the past we would dip into our plastic skull and we would find a topic at random and then right. read it. And then we'd all riff on it and have a really wonderful time. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> that's not going to happen this time. <laughs> <laughs> because Larry Stroth apparently <laughs> thinks he has a family somewhere in Northern <laughs> California. Oh. And so he decided to just run off and visit them without thinking of every, willy nilly any possible, you know, variation of what topic we could potentially do in the future. <laughs> so he did not bring with him the plastic skull, and he is he is in Northern California, and the skull is in Los Angeles, and so we don't have the skull. The skull of mm. destiny is taking a rest yes. this time. And so, but never what we fear. Were doing for this episode, the topic <laughs> is topic free for all out of our skull edition. Get topic it? free for all out of our Get skull. It, see, see? Yeah, woohoo! Yeah, see, we're wow. still gonna we're still gonna do the same sort thing. of. We yes. just we just yes. we don't need all the bells and whistles of a plastic skull. We just we can just do it. <laughs> we, it's it's we just, just just a street yeah. version. It's like yeah, the, like the it's like the you know. Get down and dirty version. It's just right. the raw, yeah. the raw version, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, the it's unplug. It's, it's topic a, free for all. Unplug. Yeah, imagine <laughs> if we were all in prison and they took our <laughs> skull away. And like, you can't have a skull because you might make a weapon out of it. That's right. You could. And we're like, well, oh yeah. Well, we're gonna have it anyway. That's right. We're gonna take over the shower and we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna have our topic free for all. Damn you. That's right. So anyway, so what we've done here is we've all written a list, an impromptu list, very impromptu. <laughs> yeah. Like we um, just wrote a list. Yeah, just wrote a list. <laughs> Each person has six numbered topics, and we're going to each pick from the other person's. We're at random. Just say, hey, James, uh, I want I want to do number three from your list. And then right, we'll right. read that topic, and then we'll talk about it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like same Topic thing. Yeah. All, except nothing like it at all. Yeah. Yeah, but, but, but Matt, we need we need someone who can roll with the punches. Yeah, we can go, go with the flow, guess. man. Yeah, we do. Yeah. 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 Who, who can who can go with our last minute hijinks and have fun with it? Uh, you know what? And when I think of fun, I think of only one person and one <laughs> person alone. <laughs> right. And that is talented writer, comedian. 
cartoonist and man about town, John Matta. I am oh, no. John Matta. John Matta, return hey, guest, friend of the party. show. Yes, that's right. He, he actually listens to us. Right, oh, and he's done yeah. topic free for all with us before. That's correct. Yes. Yes. And so, I'm glad John, you got rid of the skull. <laughs> what? <laughs> you didn't like the skull? That's it's a cute. vintage skull, sir. <laughs> Uh, you're pulling them out of your own skulls in the 2023. <laughs> oh, That's true. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yes. There you yeah. go. You guys don't well, need props. Yeah, but look, I, look, you- look, <laughs> I just I, I just want to say for our listeners, some of those little topics are are years old, and some true. of them are, have dried off, dried up mold on them. That's true. But we'll, but we'll get to them next year but yeah, for this yeah. year we're gonna we're do something a little raw a little yeah, crazy exactly so Th- those topics yeah. are now gonna be so old to be like <laughs> so what do you think of this crazy new show called sequest bigfoot and wild boy what will the second <laughs> season be like <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. yeah totally you're uh, not gonna be that old come on what is your what is your favorite episode of Powers of Matthew Star? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but anyway, people, anyway, listeners, you get the gist of it. If you're if you're yeah, just yeah. tuning in and you you're not familiar with you're this game, I think I think you'll have a lot of fun with it. Yes. So we're, we're what hoping. Say, yes. Well, what, what do you, you say? You have no that choice get, but to have fun with it. That's right. <laughs> well, Matt, That's what, right. what do you what do you say we get started? Huh? I think we God, should. Let's get please, started. Let's get started. All right. So so, so why don't we let our guest? Yes. We should do that. Yes. John Matta, please pick a person, pick a number, and we'll get this thing going. James, question number two. Mm, My uh, question number two. If I were forced to collect only one action figure of one character mm. besides Godzilla, which character would that be? Ooh. That's good. So wait that a minute. So let me one. let me clarify this. So one character from another genre thing? If you could only collect, and this is sort of in honor of John here. All right. Uh, if, oh, yeah. Because, because I already know what John. Oh, I say. see. Yes. If, if I only collected one action figure and I was only limited to one character. Got what it. Char- uh, apart from Godzilla, what character would that be? Hmm. Okay. One, so one single character, not one even like one single character. You can't one character. You can't, from character. A, you right. can't do other characters in the show or comic nope. or whatever. Nope. It's got to be one, one character. One character. Maybe you like the color variations. Is it? Is it? It's, it's yeah. a comic character. It can be anything. Any character. character. Movie, any movies, comic, TV, comics. TV. Yep. Hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, what does our guest think? What do you I'm think? taking my normal one off because I do collect the Ben Grimm's. Yes. Right, right. right. The thing for Fantastic Four, correct. Yeah. And I, I'm really worried about the new movie coming out because I've never collected one Michael Chiklis one. <laughs> right. Yeah. Good for you. <laughs> right. I just refuse. But if I had to collect one thing, because I, I remember going to the show, that Creature of the Black Lagoon collection. Holy cow, they look gorgeous together. Well, I the think different creatures. The creature of the Black Lagoon. Wow, wow. there you go. There wow. is wow. Wow. Yeah. How do you like that? Wow. Hey, you know, hey, John, really quickly, uh, I know about your Ben Grimm collection. Have you ever found that Mego one you've been looking for for years? Like Mint on Card? Have you ever got that my one? Of the Covenant. I still haven't been able to find it yeah. at a place. <laughs> but that's, that's what it is, though, right? It's like you're trying to find it at a reasonable price. They are available. Listen, but, yeah. I all, just, always want to use my hundred dollars <laughs> appearance fee that I get for being on Monster Party. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Which I don't know if you pay every guest this well, but it's embarrassing. When that check comes here every year. Uh, well, whenever we lose a plastic skull, it's a hundred bucks. <laughs> right, right. But yeah, I still haven't been able to find it. I, I, I got close and I was really circling it. But it feels like once I get it, I, I think I won't. I'll be a little bummed out. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, unless yeah, then you I don't to... understand you people. 
I but don't then know. you have to start. Then you have to pick a, a diff, different character to start collecting. That's all. Yeah, you just start getting the fire guy. So what? Is, know, what is that? The fire, fire guy. Woman. The fire guy. <laughs> fire well, I built guy. a second case over COVID. I got a second case from IKEA that I put legs on to ah. jam it up Ooh. fire. So cool, I've cool. Two big cases, and also a fan of your guys, Jim Jenkins, made oh, yeah? me a big, huge paper. The sculptures that he does. Oh where yeah, I will show it to you, boys. Ooh. So, so oh, wow. let's he's, use John all our uh, powers of description, and you're going to yes. have to. John Matt is going to show us the. Uh, oh my Jim god, Jenkins, it's beautiful. The Jim Jenkins, Jim Jenkins Ben Grimm thing, and it's oh yeah, wonderful. it's awesome. Yeah, he's got atop his Ben Grimm. He did what? a beautiful yeah. job, oh, and then, awesome. so now I've got the two cases: one case here and one case there. But Jim, who's such a huge fan of you guys, uh, wrote me and said, hey, I made this. Would you like it? And I said, well, of course. That's awesome. And the next thing I knew, it was, it looked like uh, the end of Seven, where uh, I got <laughs> like a, a box. box that <laughs> That's great. But John, I really, I mean, okay, you're, you're a collector. You're a serious collector of Ben Grimm as a thing. Yeah, you, you got to get the Mego figure already. I mean, it's, it's you got to you got to. It's a it's one of the best. It's really one of the best toys of of that character ever made. Really, I I think you you talk to the wife and you say I'm going to spend a few <laughs> extra wife. bucks because this is well. I I know how their relationship works. So you know, and 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 what? just spend the money on getting that Mego f- figure because you need that in your collection. I but know, wait a minute. but I don't think I would need the box. Do you guys? <gasps> ever no, need no, you get the box. No. Oh, but if, if, if the box. Box. John, if you have a moratorium, if you have a certain price level, then you then you do, do not go for a package. You can, go, I'm sure you can find a good loose vintage Mego thing in good shape. And, and for, you know, yeah, you just have to go Etsy and eBay and have to kind of just look, you know. Okay, okay. Yeah. And creature, obviously, and that's Larry can attest to this. I mean, the creature does work so well for a toy because there's just so you know, it's just a such a beautiful figure, full bodied mon- monster. So yes. many ways to interpret it, you know, like yeah. it's just it's a great character for uh, merchandise. It really is, you know. There yeah. have been one or two art shows in Los Angeles where it was all creature stuff. Yeah, yeah. Boy, it, it always takes my breath away when you see a full room and yeah. then it's always a full size figure of it, and you're going, My backup would be, which I already collected, and I've got a pretty big collection of the uh the B9 Lost in Space Robots. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a great one. Yeah. That's good, too. And I yeah. still regret, uh, Dave Higgins and I went, a uh, company named Icons was selling them for 10 grand. Yes. And wow. And happened to have 10 grand. And Dave and I both said, let's go out to lunch. And then we both got tired and went home. And then I went back to buy it. They had the... Um, we got to see the factory when they were making them, and they had about 15 of them open, wow. uh, out. But yeah. here's the thing. A week later, they went out of business and fucked everybody. Oh, yeah. man. Oh, okay. Yeah. It, got, uh, it had a CD on it where Bob May would uh, yeah. Yeah. With him where he'd say your name. And if yeah. when you pulled the packet out, it went down and everything. So, yeah. so once, it, once the company went up, they, they did never kind of were able to bring it back to try to remake it? or. They, never they disappeared, made and I don't know whether I, I'm saying icon. It might not have been, but it was a place in um, North Hollywood or Van Nuys, someplace. Dave took me, and we looked at them. Mm, yeah, okay. It was, uh, it was a lot for ten grand at that time. Sure, uh, sure. I think I probably had twelve grand in the bank, but it just seemed like <laughs> I have to do yeah. this. Yeah, right. And, uh, I get it. I, that's one of the things. Like, if you could get one of those in your life, I just don't know where I would put it. I yeah, figure, yeah. No, you I you'll figure, figure it out. It out. Yeah, but yeah. That yeah. would have been, and I felt that was cheating because I've already done a collection of that already. So I've got right. about sixty of those downstairs, all sealed up and stuff. Wow. So John, so John, the figure that you would get is a creature from the Black Lagoon. That's what you would you would go. Yeah, with I would go okay. creature the black okay. lagoon. Okay, with good. Art, everything. You know? All right, yep. good. Nice, nice. Okay, so we moving on to another. Uh, uh, no, are, are we all gonna? T- are we all? Well, gonna yeah, say, no, yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, okay, Larry, so I think... I'll go. I'll go really fast. No, yeah, no, yeah. no that's when, fine. When James said Godzilla, everyone knows that I love the creature. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna. 
break a little bit with his rule. I'm going to say, if I had Godzilla's and creatures and I could only pick one other figure, what mm-hmm. would it be? Yeah. And I think, guys, I was thinking about this. Maybe it would be Superman. It would really? be, and mm-hmm. I, I would get the Mego Superman in the box and I would get all, right. all kinds of Superman figures. That's probably what I would do because I love I can see that. Know, classic Superman. Great choice. Uh, yeah. That's, yeah. That's m- mine as well. That's mine really? As well. I, really? I also wow. happen to have the most looking right like if i have the most action figures of any one character it happens to be superman i i like the colors yeah I, me too it, it's usually a pretty you know it's stocky right so it's a pretty robust yeah. figure right and uh, the cape is always really usually really beautiful cool. yeah yeah i, I, yeah, mean, I, I can see that indiscriminately buy every superman figure and i haven't you know there's, nuts, there's, but, there's probably some cool and i'm sure you know there's, there's lots of weird uh, unlicensed knockoffs too. They're kind of interesting. They're, you know? Oh yes. yeah, yeah. So yes. yeah, yeah. And All super right. super girl is fun too because she's got a different variation. Nope, different nope, costumes, nope. No, no, no. Okay, Superman. No, Superman. no. Okay. Or a Bizarro okay. so, Superman. No, no. Totally <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, okay. So we know what John wants. We know what James and Larry want. Okay. So Sean, what about you? Well, I think, and I think we've talked about this before. At least I have, as far as this character being. A, character, a monster character that lends itself so well to interpretation. Uh, I would say Hedera, the smog monster. Oh, so there's yeah. so it, it's it's one of the few characters where I don't mind when it's like some you know urban art guy has gone off and done some weird version of it. A yeah. lot of times I wouldn't like that when if it's like another kaiju, but with Hedera because it's such a bizarre. <laughs> amorphous creature that also no, has big forms yeah. and the colors and the, the just the figures I've seen that I, I, it's just some of the, I mean I want all of them they're just so many beautiful colors and interpretations yeah. there's the see-through one there's the light up oh, yeah. one I, they're just I could see I mean I already have one shelf section on my shelf of mostly hedra so I could easily just have a wall of hedra toys okay mm, yeah nice yeah. Uh, all right Matt what about you well, I mean, I have the characters that I like that I have a lot of figures of, like Common Rider and Ultraman and, right. and Hedera, too. Uh, right, right. So the fact that I have pretty much what I want for the most part so far in those categories, I would pick something that Larry has and I would do Robbie the Robot. Oh, oh good choice. Yes. Yeah. That's, nice. that's a great choice, too. Yeah. yeah. Because that's Cause another one of, where there's so many uh, ways. Different can, variations. Yes. yes yeah. Colors. And from the sizes. Tin toys to yeah. uh, resin figures to what have yes. you. Uh, there's a lot to choose from. That's good. And there's, there's other other robots that they had to call planet robots. Right. Or, right. Right. Or Robert or, uh, robot. Or moon robot. Yeah. Well, yeah. And it's it's. But. It, when you look at it, it's clearly a Robbie. It's Robbie. Robot, yeah. And that counts, so, yeah. That's, that that's a great one. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Cool. Move All on. right. John, that was next. Nice. Okay. Um, how about if I pick Sean, give me your number two. Okay. My number two is what music composer would you choose to write the soundtrack to your life? <laughs> <gasps> oh, oh my God. Oh, Sean, that great. is great. Wow. Oh, well. Can it be a band? Sure. But uh, I would say it can be a band, but I would say a band that has contributed soundtracks to genre films. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 Do I have unlimited money to do this? (laughs) It doesn't cost you anything. (laughs) Yeah, I know. It doesn't cost. Yeah. It's just you're. uh, you have your you have your pick, bono. Benny, yeah. You have your pick of uh, okay. any okay. composer, alive or dead, from the past who uh, okay. can do. Uh, That's a great question. If okay, if great. I did music on my life, obviously I'd want to make it bigger and grander than it really is. So of course I'd go for the maybe the granddaddy. I'd love John Williams, you know, who gave sure. us Superman, mm-hmm. Star Wars, Raiders of the Lost Ark. But you know, I, I mean, that's that's what I would love. That would be awesome. Okay, um, so, so big, think, but big, I, big but orchestral, think, yes, you know, big uh, orchestra, and I can you see know, that. And and of course, really, you know, the sympathetic strings, you know, <laughs> at the bitter moments yeah. in his life, and <laughs> right. you know, and in the grand revenge things, you know, when things go great, you know, and explosions and. Yeah, yeah, I think the music uh, would be bigger than the actual life, but yeah, big, yeah bigger I, than I, bigger I, than life. I could see I that. see that for you too. I really do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, John I would Williams. Go much smaller. I would go smaller. <laughs> I'm gonna go with 
John Carpenter. Okay, good choice. Yeah, good choice. I like that. <clears throat> really oh, simple. Good. Just him in a room. <laughs> driving, <laughs> driving synthetic yeah. uh, synthesizer score. Yeah, five notes and you're yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you're in. Okay, so I like Larry's answer better, but I'm sticking with Carpenter. Okay, nice. that's All great. Right. Matt, nice. what's you? bum me out the whole time, probably. <laughs> well, what about uh, for, you guys? Well, for me, I think it would be Goblin. Okay, nice. Ooh. Yeah. It would Ooh. be scary, loud. And uh, just off-putting at times, yep. which is well, how I sum up myself. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. All right, James, how about you? Bernard Herman. No oh, question. Nice. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like in that. fact, for most of my my life, Herman music is playing in my head. <laughs> like <laughs> right. is, he is the soundtrack <laughs> of my psyche. That's, you know, that's great. As much as I love all these different composers, and my original go-to was Williams, and I was like, you know what? In reality, it's Herman. Herman is yeah. up here. So Herman's cool. in my head. So nice. Yeah. And Matt, I would, Matt, I would say I'm I, I'm with Matt. My choice would be Goblin. There you go. Wow, it's Goblin because Goblin can be it can be scary, it can be driving and kind of rock, but it also can be beautiful. I mean, they have beautiful, elegant uh, soundtracks too. I mean, they they cover the whole gamut but they but have, i wouldn't use any of those for my life <laughs> so I, 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 I would use all their but they they just have an edge to them and a sound to them yes. that is very unique yep. and mm. uh and i and i i just love the era that they really thrived in you know the 70s and 80s and argento films and just yeah i just i i have i I'm almost pretty much all their soundtracks to, to their horror films. So yeah, I would go with Goblin for sure. Nice. Nicely right. guys. Nice. Fun okay. All, all right. right. So um, Sean, why don't you go now? All right. I will go with James number five. Ooh. James number five. James. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the movie studio logo I'm the most fond of. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's a I good one. And I know which one it is too. It's I one that, it. yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, can I go? Uh, let me go. Yeah, it's first. you. It's your. You. Okay. Yeah. So my this. my uh, it's one that they don't do anymore. It was probably maybe in the seventies into the eighties, but it was the original United Artists logo. Oh yeah. Which started out really subtle, and it was like a black screen. It was like this thin line, and the music would go like done. Dun dun, right. dun 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 dun, and, and like it would turn to form, and it's just this sleek silver U. You know, the U and A are kind of formed together, and it yeah. just kind of reveals itself slowly turning, and the music is. I just the the cue music cue and the visual. It's simple and elegant, and not too long. I, I love that. I love that U A. Very uh, good. So that would be mine. nice. All right, nice. Who's nice next? One. Oh, okay, uh, the movie logo that I like the most, it was really magical for me. Anything that the 1930s Universal Studios with the globe uh, and the little plane, sure, yeah. sure. plane that, that went across. I love that little plane. You know, his yeah. way across the globe. And I liked it too. And, it was, and I love that one. And there was no music too in the beginning of it. Right. It was just like, you just hear the, no, hear the, no, the, that's hear right. the plane. Yeah. The plane. And it's great. And it's, yeah. I love I mean, yeah, eventually the universe will change their logos and music, but I love, you're right. I love that because then it kicks in with like whatever the movie is, but I love the yeah. original. Yeah. It, that's cool. Yeah. And it's funny when I heard the plane, I knew, I knew what I was getting. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. As far as a movie goes. So that and yep. still to this day, I get a little, little chill when when yeah. i see the globe a little plane go across that's me a good too. one james thank you yeah, me yeah. too yeah. well uh for me it's all it's the universal 40s logo with the music and the stars around it that's that's I, my second choice yeah i, just, I, love, I that. love that i wish i could find a way to like do a 3d recreation of that because i would oh, love it yeah. it's like you know, i mean grace i could make yeah like build a, a lamp or something yeah, yeah. especially but, hey, the M, yeah when it builds up <laughs> 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 If I can jump in, because that's mine too. Mm. Nice, yeah. That's really? that's the one. Because I because I remember seeing that and the the feeling, Larry, that you got when you saw the plain one, yeah, is the feeling I got when I saw that. Because I think I saw that first. Yeah. And yeah. So right, just that that bright globe and the stars 
And that music, which is so like, I mean, to this day, as you were saying, you know, it gives me a little, you know, chill up my spine. And yeah. then looking at that logo and how they did it, like as a kid, I couldn't figure out how did they even do this? It's actually really visually like, as, I guess it's a mechanical model or something, but it looks amazing. It still looks amazing. Yeah. Went Very out, clever. Went out however space. they did it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's really good. You're right. Yeah. All right, John. That's, that's a good one. I don't remember if this was for like an independent play. What was one with the two guys that with the hammers that were banging stuff? Oh yeah, rank, rank the... organ rank organization. Rank, I think. rank, rank. Yeah. dang, yeah, dang, that's yeah. Really wow, yeah. that's a good one. Yeah. yeah, that's a great one. Yep, nice. I love that rank. Yeah, that was cool. Sweet, good. nice. All right, All right. next. So that was Sean. Okay, so now uh, James. Let's do James. Okay, I'm going to ask uh, John for his number one topic. Ooh, John's number one. Okay. Taking Star Wars off the table, what's the movie, since you were as a kid, generated the best toy when it came out? Ooh. Ooh. That's good. Ooh. Ooh. That's a good one. That is a good one. Wow. Yeah. Um, as a kid. Wow. As a because kid. you can do from a kid to an adult if you want. I, I don't know. So many oh, kids no. think you're so fond. But okay, is it you're saying one individual toy? It could be like a line of toys. A line of toys. Of toys. Or or both, right? It could be, yeah, it could be toys or toy. But okay. maybe they came out that you went, okay. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> it can't be it can't be something that they're still doing stuff for. Yeah, yeah. So right when it came out, you're going, I, I gotta get that. Okay, well, um, I know, I know a line of toys that Go. definitely made my head explode, and I would say uh, <laughs> the uh, the Mego Planet of the Apes. Because, oh yes, like, yeah, like sure. I mean, I, I think I, yes. I, I think I, if I'm not mistaken, I believe the Star Trek figures came out first. I think, yes. I think, <clears throat> and those also were amazing because they blew me away because yeah. I was into the original series. But when I saw, I, I don't know even know how I, maybe it was a commercial on TV when I just first found out that Mego was making Planet of the Apes action figures and with all this play sets and all that, like, I, I, I was just, I was beside myself. I mean, John, that's <laughs> mine. That's mine too. Yeah. Because I, I, I think mean, Planet, mm. Planet of the Apes in general, even if you forget about Mego, if you just did exactly. Planet of the Apes collectibles around that time, there was right. so much. Yes. And I love yes. pretty much all of it. I mean, I was, oh my God, I was ape crazy then and still am. And yes. like to, to have those, you know, to recreate all the from the scenes in the movies and just play and have my own stories to create with all those figures and play sets. And I, it, I mean, it was just amazing. It was, yeah, that, that whole line of toys just gave me so much joy as a kid. Right. Yeah. Those are nice. Those are nice. Um, I, I remember, um, you know, look, likely you guys, I, I love the Planet of the Apes too, but I, I'm going to go out on a limb here. When the E.T. toys came out, I, mean, I was, I oh, was okay. so excited. Yeah. And <laughs> the one I wanted was, it was little Elliot on the bicycle with the little E.T. in the basket. And it was funny because, you know, I picked up, you know, my, my parents and, you know, birthday stuff. I, I got various E.T.s except for the damn bicycle one. And uh, I remember being, you know, frustrated. It's like, why can't I get this bicycle one? But, and so I, but I even got the ET vitamins, you know, <laughs> that you had to take. And, and uh, yeah, I have a bunch of, I still have a bunch of, and, and the illegal ETs. I have those too. Oh yeah. I remember a lot of those nice. made it, made it to market before the legal ones. Really? And it's, it's like, yeah, these were made either in, in China or Mexico or whatever. And they right. were sold as, as aliens, you know, but it was clearly E.T. Right, <clears throat> right. And people bought them, you know, because they were rushed to market before right. the, the ones that were licensed. Right, right. So, um, you know, the weird thing is I have a lot of different E.T. variations, but it's not like, hey, E.T. had a spaceship or, you know, E.T. had, you know, a lot of characters with them. It was basically a lot of different E.T.s. So I had a bunch of different E.T.s. Sorry. Right. Okay. All right. Very good. E. I got a quick thing with that. My parents, I begged them for something ET, and what they got me for Christmas was the light up ET finger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> the worst, most disgusting toy ever. <laughs> it looked like a, a weird European dude's cock that lit up. <laughs> Oh, they do, you know. <laughs> yes, it was it, it so. Was. But I didn't know we were poor. I guess <laughs> it, it looked it looked like an old wrinkled hot dog. But the, the, the yeah. funny thing is, is it, I remember seeing those at the store, and no one was buying them, John. And, really? and I remember seeing them being marked down to a dollar. And like an That's idiot, what it I was. was. I wish I bought a lot of them and had them all on my fingers, you know. But no, I did. I didn't. That'd be creepy. <laughs> yeah, you'd be like a weird alien Freddy Krueger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, James. What about you? So, so John, you, you're talking about a, a movie that has come out, a movie, right? Not a TV show or a series or anything, but a movie be, that's right? co- come out in our lifetime since we were. Kids, you know what? Right? I will give you a TV show too. If you oh, need you it. you can't do that. You it's, 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 it's his yeah. topic. Movie. He can movie. do it. Movie. Well. Oh, it has to be a movie. Yes. Movie. It's okay. a movie. Okay. Well, uh, and, and, and it, okay. What, will, what'll, what'll get this answer faster? I will <laughs> single out Alien. Oh, that's uh, good. Be, mm, because that. because right. there was the original Alien toy that came out. But since then, NECA in particular has come out with these gorgeous action figures. It's yes. just about every character from just about every movie and scene. Movie, yeah. Yeah, uh, but from the original Alien, those are the ones that I collected all the characters of, and they're beautiful likenesses. It's just gorgeous, yeah. and I'm so happy that they finally put them out. But even if we were going to go all the way back to when the movie came out, the fact that you know that controversial toy came out, seventy nine, yeah. you know, I, yeah. I have it, yeah, With yeah. its box. So yeah. there's their box. That's my pick. Very good. good. Yeah, nice one. Nice I like one. It. Okay. So, John, have you have you uh, told us? Gotta yours? be yeah. Planet of the Apes. The, All right. It drove me crazy as a yeah, kid. Yeah, everything yeah. about it. I wanted everything about everything. Me too. It's, yes, yeah, me too. I was life. obsessed. I really yeah. All right. Absolutely. Nice. So Matt, why don't you why don't you pick someone new? Okay. Uh I'm gonna do Sean number five. Okay. What is one of your favorite documentaries on the horror sci-fi genre? Mm. Well, <laughs> I mean, come on. We in search of darkness. <laughs> sure, every oh, single God. volume. Yeah, come yeah. On. that's a good I mean, one. I, look, I love, I love documentaries. Like I just watched one that was really good, and I can't remember the name of it, but it was about folk horror, and I love that. And that's um, on my list, Matt. That's that, a that, really that, wow. That's that's what's the name of that? One of my one of my picks. Woodlands dark and days bewitched. Is yes. that the one you're talking about? That's the one. That's it's the like one. a three hour documentary and it is amazing it's so good and it's it is, so yeah. expansive and it actually turned me on to a lot of films me and, too. and uh, especially yeah. british tv shows yes 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 and so yeah. i love i love that that would be you know the runner-up but of course i mean david weiner has done such an amazing job of providing us with this giant hours long love that blo- yeah i, I mean 80s horror and and the, and the search of tomorrow. I mean, it is also wonderful. Yeah, but yeah. I'm David's, talking like I, I think I think of those in search of darkness as one documentary. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. Still, well, I'm still waiting to get the. Um, yeah, I have I have the one actually coming in the mail soon. Is the uh, number three, um, right. and uh, yeah, no, there. That those would be my first pick. But I wanted to write that particular topic question because yeah, the Woodlands Dark and Days Bewitched is a uh, folk horror is not really hasn't really been examined that closely or right. that thoroughly yes. up until this um documentary and it is really it is really well done it, and, they, than- and they discuss it from every possible aspect uh regional um, yes and true. then right. you know films that were done in a certain time and like i love that they start off with blood on satan's claw Right, right. Wicker mm. Man, and what's the other one? Oh, uh, Witchfinder General. Witchfinder General. There's like the big three. The big but three. There, but there are so many others that, and it's yes. the it's one of the few times, and I was, sincerely, this is one of the few times I'd watch a horror documentary and be like, what's that movie? Yes, what's that movie? Right. Mm. Yeah. What the hell's that movie? No, like, I, 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 I did it more list. than any I've done in yeah. a long time because it's yep. because it's a genre that's not really touched upon much. And there's they, they have like 
poetry in there and like music, yes. but it's really, it's really well done. It, it, it sets the mood for this kind of stuff. It's, it's yeah. great. And very it's, scholarly. And yeah, I yeah. was, I was really impressed with that. I haven't, I haven't even finished it yet, but and, I'm, and I'm that, like, I'm like two hours in, but yeah, I love Blu-ray, it. I think it's so good. The Blu-ray has hours of extra stuff too. Oh my God. And, uh, wow. Yeah. Okay. I, uh, I gotta get, I gotta get that. I think it's Severin. I think it was Severin. That yes, it, out. it is. Severin, yeah, yes. it's uh, it's fantastic. Okay, nice. I'm going to go with American Movie. Oh, oh. that is terrific. <laughs> That's yep. a great movie. Plus, yep. Mike King uh, passed away the, a couple months ago. Oh, is that right? Oh, uh, really? Yeah, I mean, COVID. if you look at him, the fact that he lasted this long. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Testament right. to scratchers and fast food. <laughs> uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a that is one of my favorite documentaries as well, too. Yeah. And and, and what's interesting too is when you go back and you actually watch Coven. Um Coven. Well, <laughs> it, it, it's it's not bad. No. Yeah, yeah. And and John, can you give it a little gist though for those who don't know what the movie, what this movie, because it came out like in, I think in nineteen ninety nine. Yeah, isn't it a documentary about uh, a Wisconsin filmmaker? Yep. What was it, Mike Shank, and what was his first name? Mark, Mark, and Mike, I think. Mark Borchardt, right? Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yep. Yes. Yep. And uh, so it's them trying to make a uh, a horror movie, a, a very low budget horror movie, right? Very low budget horror <laughs> movie, and uh, it, it's just just so like like Matt said that his movie is. I would put his first movie up against most people's first horror independent movie that they yeah. did themselves. Yes, yeah. yeah, it's, it's a very, it's, very movie. it's really spooky and atmospheric and. Um, uh, I think he does an amazing job using black and white. Yeah. <clears throat> well, years ago, Jerry Miner and I, we would call Mike Shank up once a week from our office. We worked at the Martin <laughs> Short Show. And just, he goes, yeah, Mark doesn't talk to me too much. And, and he goes, shit. And I go, why'd you say shit? And uh, Mike would go, oh, I lost another scratcher. So he's talking to us. <laughs> <and saying scratcher. laughs> Wow. <laughs> we tried to get them as correspondents for the show. Really? And yeah, they, no, nobody got it where they went, I, why do we want to do that? And then the next thing you know, Letterman used both of them as correspondents on his show. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But it's such a it's such a perfect movie of watching if you're a fan of making your own movie exactly or you're just a fan of good it's something you should get under your belt before you yeah. leave this planet yeah and you really are when you're watching that film in this zone of just rooting for the underdog i mean right, this guy right. does whatever he can to get this thing made and done mm-hmm. and um yeah it's 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 quite uh inspiring it is yeah, that's a good one. Okay. Nice. Uh, there's a a nice documentary on the DVD collection of The Creature from the Black Lagoon, the complete legacy collection, which shows all three films. And the documentary is called Back to the Black Lagoon. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's and good. On it, what, what, what's so great about it is they have these great interviews with Julie Adams, with Ben Chapman, who played the creature, David Scow, who friend of the show, who's been on yes. the show, is interviewed. And it goes really in depth on how it was created and, and how Jack Arnold was involved and where the story came from. And it's it kind of gives you a great kind of condensed version of how this film was put together and the popularity of it and the 3d and, and it's just, it's just a wonderful documentary. And so, I, I mean, I know people are like shifting to Blu-rays, but that's one great thing about that legacy collection that I yeah, love. And I, yeah. I that is have. good. Yeah. It's a good companion. It's a good video companion piece to the book that was put out, yeah. you know, with uh, the creature chronicles, right? The, cre- the creature chronicles. Yeah. By Tom yeah, it's Weaver. Like, yeah. And, it's like a kind of a good, and, it's like a good uh, comp- Schechter, David right. Schechter. Yeah. And that is on the uh, the Blu-rays now, right? As well, like if you get the Creature Collection, I think I, I, think, I think the that's latest. On there. I think the late that one the Blu-ray that has like all the Universal right. films, horror mm-hmm. films. Now I think it's in there. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, oh, that's, that's a good. great one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, but that's that's good. wonderful, wonderful documentary. You know, that's the thing. That I, I I would hope that I, I know we've heard about this in the past that 
when films are being released to a DVD or Blu-ray, they're not being done as much. And gee, it costs too much money to make a documentary. God, I love it. I, it makes me want to buy it even more. Yeah, me studios too. Studios follow through and do something like that. Anyway. Yeah. Nice. Absolutely. Cool. Well, um, I like uh, Room 237, uh, which came out right. a few years ago. Oh, and yeah. It's, yep. a, it's a take on Kubrick's The Shining. Uh, with people who are reading things into it, uh, <laughs> symbolism, subliminal stuff that, you know, it's all subject to interpretation, like everything right. is. And right. that movie, that movie in particular, it certainly lends itself to that. Yes. Uh, and you you may not believe, I don't believe most of the theories, right. but right. I, <laughs> I, I appreciate that there are people who do believe that yeah, and, just... and commit themselves so much to the point that they will run the movie from front to back and back to middle and compare them while they're running simultaneously that way. It's like, how much time do you have on your hands? Yeah, but I but love, I love yeah. the fact that they went there. You know, yeah. I am a little worried about the guy who worked in the whole faking of the moon landing. Like I'm, I'm a little worried about where his life is going to go. Like I'm, but it's, yeah. it's like, it's fat. It's also a, to me, it's like a fascinating social experiment because it's how human nature how in us we want to make sense of things and sure, connect, yeah. connect things yeah. and find a we're, reason for something it's we like, are right we're it's, pattern seeking creatures yes yeah right. and that's what that movie is about to me which is fascinating yeah 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 it's, it's funny though too it's just i mean the way it's presented is kind of in this kind of almost manic stream of conscious way which is how the people a lot of the people right <laughs> without yes. think of the you know it just like goes and it's but it's fascinating though it's fascinating mm. yep no that's a great one all right well. nice okay where are we at now well Ooh. now we're back at we're back to john now right yeah right. so john john why don't you pick something for matter from larry because they haven't done <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know I, don't need that. I don't need that larry <laughs> okay you know, all it. right i don't okay. you know what fuck it. Okay. I'll, I'll just okay. I'll, okay. I'll keep my list because it's okay. a good list larry it's a john, good i'm list. sure it is i'm sure it is but john why uh, john is our guest john why don't you go me uh i'm gonna go to matt number four. Oh, okay i'm sure you'll all have some opinions <clears throat> about this all right the topic is Good, but I can't watch it again. Oh, oh, that's wow. easy. That is so yeah. easy for me. Okay, easy. Yeah. Larry, go. Uh, Midsummer. Once was enough. I really? saw it. And, <laughs> All right. And, and and unfortunately, my daughter. That's one of her favorite movies, and she loves really? watching that over and over <laughs> really? again. Yeah, wow. you can ask her about it. And we she she and I got into this whole discussion about it. And she gave me a different perspective on it, but still, you know what? Once was enough. I'm moving on. And great film, great film. I yes, it is. People yes, see it, is. it. Yeah, but you know, I'm I'm good. Wow. Yeah. wow. Okay. That's tough. Actually, I'm trying to think of now. So good, yeah. good, but not great. It could be yeah. great. It could be something like because this is what I was thinking: is there are some movies that I've watched so many times. Well, yeah, yeah. It's like a song that's played too much. Yeah, right? yeah. And right. when I say well, well, I can't watch it again, I mean, like, I, I need some time. Mm -hmm. Or it could be I, one when, of those ones where you just, like, I'm done. I had a good time, but I'm I'm done with this. Is it, mm -hmm. when, when you said good, I just thought it's a good film, you know? Right, right. Good, great. I just it was. It's a yeah. really. I don't want to lessen it. It's it, it sure. is really a great film. It well, is well done. This uh, what I the first thing that came to my mind was Avatar. Because Me too. Oh you know, yeah. Can argue. Good, you huh? Argue, really? Well, it is yeah, good. You can. You know, it's it's, it's not. You could certainly argue that it's a terrible movie, but at the, the time that it came out, it was what? generally it was generally positively reviewed. Yeah, and I remember. Yeah that somebody at work had seen it and I asked him what he thought and he said well I wouldn't want to see it again and I, I didn't know what that meant but then when I went to mm -hmm. see it I walked out and I thought you know what now I understand what that meant <laughs> there's mm -hmm. no reason to see that movie again mm. yeah that's tough, it's it's a tough James, one. does that mean you don't want to see the second film James that is correct have you seen it Larry I'm, I'm seeing it tomorrow night ah okay so we in the future, you um, can maybe share your uh, thoughts. Yes, yes, I will. I, I look forward to it. Yes, I'm, I'm like that regular Joe, like the 
other millions of other regular Joes out there who've already thrown it over the one billion dollar mark. So yes, yes. <laughs> okay, it has to be good if it made money. I guess. That's the Larry philosophy. If it won an award, it made money. <laughs> billion dollars, Sean. So it's a great movie then. Nothing to sneeze at. <laughs> so you think it's a great movie? Yeah, you know, I'm going to see <laughs> a it, great Sean, movie. But, but you've already accepted it's a great movie because it made a billion dollars. I'm sure it's really good. I'm sure it's really, You're sure really of it. Good. You're just sure. You're sure it's real written. <laughs> sure. Well written. It's going to win <laughs> Oscars for best screenplay, probably. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. So, so you're so hey, really you're just we, like we, you're like a studio answer? guy. You're like no, the can, it, yes. Unless it unless it, you know what unless it's in the green, it don't mean anything to me. <laughs> well, uh, you know, green means a lot. Okay. But I'm sure we could debate this until we're older than the tooth here. So why don't we just keep going here about this? Somebody else go, because I'm still thinking. I have trouble with this one. John? I agree with, you know what? When I came out of Avatar, is someone just said to me, what, what was that movie about? I would have gone, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Those guys and tales and I, I, I don't know. <laughs> But, but visually, so that would visually. Be mine as well. It was the first thing that came into my brain, maybe just because the second movie is so big and James Cameron's talking about everything that anybody wants to ask him. He's doing every kind of clickbait headline to get people in to see this movie. Yeah, so he knows how to do it. You put Schwarzenegger in the last one and, you know, everything that you could think of. So. That was the one that, like, I guess it was good, but if someone said, "Would you want to see it again?" I no, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna. Go, I have to go with that one too because, as far as the general attitude towards that movie, the first one, you know, it was it was so popular and such a big hit. You know, it did change the technology for 3D technology. You know, so for all those reasons. But but it's true. I, I, I even with the new one coming out, which I'll eventually see when it goes to streaming. But but like I know a lot of people watched the, rewatched the first one in anticipation of the second one. Yes, I w- I have no desire to watch the first one again. So I'm going to go with that one too. If there, right. like I said, if there, if I'd seen every other movie and TV show on the planet and nothing else to watch, I might might revisit the first <laughs> Avatar. But I can't I can't say I would now. So well, that's honest. It's yeah, honest. I mean that's just how I feel. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, my choice, and I think James will agree with me a little bit on this. Mm-hmm. Um, I did enjoy, except for the last one, the reboot Planet of the Apes series. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But I yeah. have no desire to watch any of those again. Well. Didn't it seem like when they started the reboot that there might be all this potential and all this promise and it was going to go somewhere really interesting? And yeah, I have not. to admit, you're I, right. You know how I feel like th- there are three, right? Three. Yeah. And the last okay. one was a giant. Well, thug. Well, well, last one was awful. And I thought the first one, uh, so when I saw the first one, I thought, oh, I liked this is it. showing. No, I, I liked it. I, thought, yeah. I had some issues, but I thought this is showing promise for yes. this is, could be cool. And I yes. really liked the second one. Uh, I did. I I, I, yeah. I know that the the, t- the titles are so kind of they're so generic. They just re. Yeah, I know the first one's Rise and the second one is uh, Dawn. 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 And Dawn, and then the third right. one's War. 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 Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So Dawn, I really liked the most. Rise, I liked. Dawn, I liked a, a lot. And, and then War was really disappointing. And it would just I just thought of the same screenwriters who wrote those wrote the Avatar new Avatar film. Oh, is that right? Rick Jaffa, is Rick that... and Amanda Jaffa. Rick Jaffa used to be wow. a um, see? yeah, wow. used to be a, wow. so the same screenwriters for those those apes reboots uh did this along with Cameron did we Avatar are, 2. We are soothsayers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you're right, you're right, Matt. And even Dawn, Dawn? one of the apes. I mean you're not in a I hurry would, to see it again. Yeah, I I yeah, I'm not in a hurry to see it again. That's true. Um, so yeah, it's it's weird that 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 franchise kind of busted, you know, yeah, like it kind yeah, of it did. It's weird, isn't it? Weird, like I mean, Burton blows it completely, and then these guys come along, they show promise, and then it's like, ah, eh, it's that's ah, weird. Well, and hey, it's interesting too how like if something if a series of films ends on a bad note, how it taints 
all the, yeah, all that right. came before it, which and, is and kind of wait. the way I feel yeah. about Game of Thrones. Yeah, I know yeah. there's so much great stuff in Game of Thrones, but knowing where it all goes, when, yeah. when you leave it, feel it yucky now. With it's that hard to get excited now. now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yep, I agree. All right, wow. See, that was right. okay, wasn't it? Yeah, hmm. yeah, yeah, that was good. good. That's good. All right, so John, thank you for that. So now it's my turn. Um, I'm gonna say, Matt, give me Ooh. your number one. Ooh. Give me your number one. Uh. Actually, this might be similar to, <laughs> but should I do a number two instead? You you can. Yeah, uh, Matt's number, number two. two. Number two. Okay, let's do that one. That'll be more fun. Um, and I and I want fun. You you like fun? <laughs> I know you. You're you're all about fun. You're Mister Fun. Do. Well, I don't know if you're I'm Mister Fun. You're Johnny Fun. You're Captain <laughs> Fun. Regular Joe Fun. Yeah. You're, <laughs> you're fun and cheap. Uh, oh. Okay. So this is it. <laughs> I think you're gonna like this. What other horror characters besides Jason would work great in space? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Besides Jason, okay. Right. Because okay. I, I, I personally love okay. Jason X or Jason. Yeah, 10, yeah, I know. You wanna? Right, yeah. It's a, it's a uh, misunderstood film. But well, okay. If I understand you correctly, uh, something first popped in my head. And yes. I realize it's not necessarily a character, but it kind of is. But what if you took Phantasm and you had the the orb in outer space? Would I was just going to say that. That was my. Would, would that, that work? Oh no, that man. works. That works perfectly. The tall man oh, is great okay. because he's yeah, from space. Yeah, he, yeah. he's an well, alien. Yes, that is true. The one and thing we didn't get with that series is we didn't get that, a film on their planet. And yeah, it's so funny. That's right. Man, it's so funny you say that. I'm. I was always bummed. I always thought that they were going to do that. We would have, a, you know, the tall man on the other planet and the little, the little squished people right. and all that right. stuff because you, you get that never, one little it, you get that one it, little hint of it on that yeah, little desert planet you do you, you see do. when he looks through it, the um and the, honestly guys if you think about it i, I understand look phantasm was a, a low budget film they did a great job uh with what the what budget they had i think to do something in outer space when it would the budget would be a little have to be a much bigger yeah yeah and and i just think it would be too hard but that matt that was the first thing that popped in my head when you said that Horror, i love I that thought, that's a great answer i thought tall man and and then that sphere can you imagine like tall in, man in, chasing you through like a sleek spaceship set you know or even cool. even you remember like if like you know if like in the uh, the film the martian when they're moving through their their spaceship and they're going can you imagine the sphere floating after you that would yeah. be terrifying like a sphere spaceship anyway. like, a, like a yeah that's cool what if also yeah. and just now i'm now i'm having a really because that's such a great answer larry that what if you did one where it was like a spaceship lands on this planet and it's like kind of like alien where mm -hmm. that planet is desolate and you find out that this is the planet of the spears and the tall man, but their society broke down or whatever. And then it, it, that's, it's been, you know, ye years now in the future and the astronauts or whatever uh, find this planet again and unearth you know, the sphere. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. And they all, and it's so it's a little bit of alien feel to it. Yeah, that's cool. Because I mean, yeah, cool. I, I mean, I'd love to see explored the whole home world of yes. that, that species, wherever a tall man comes from. You don't even Matt, know. Be like, Matt, you go a step further and then they learn how to control the orbs. And there's many orbs. You can have an army of orbs. Sure. Ooh. Ooh. Pretty yeah. cool. <laughs> or you get orb people. Ooh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Right, we could we could do this all day. Okay, so <laughs> all right. Anybody, Anybody else? else in space? How about uh, Freddy Krueger? I mean, Good. with, with uh, getting into the dreams of astronauts, you know, like U.S. astronauts, right. or even you know, on a, on a, on the uh, International Space Station, right? And some of the some of the damage that he could inflict. Uh, so it's not teenagers, you know, it's adults, but right? You're you're in this environment which really lends itself to some, you know, really potentially horrifying shit. Sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually amazed at, the, I mean, the way the Elm Street franchise went, I'm surprised actually they never did a Freddy in space. I'm sure that was on, in development at some point, a, a Freddy <laughs> yeah. Krueger in space uh, film. James, I'm work. so happy you brought that up because what I was thinking was a 
Freddy Krueger Star Trek crossover. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that could be cool. So you got Freddy Krueger on the Enterprise. Classic Enterprise, of course. Right. Sure. Yeah, yeah that's great. Because, I, I mean, again, it's sort of like there's that wonderful Star Trek episode, Wolf in the Fold. Yes. Oh, yeah. The spirit Jack the of Jack the Ripper, the, which is this alien creature that has been sort of a Jack the Ripper on all these different planets and different yeah. civilizations. And so, you know, you have, you know, Freddy Krueger unleashed and all of a sudden getting into Spock's dreams. Yeah, that'd be cool. So good. Wow. I want to like see that. old school uh, Pike in the wheelchair. <laughs> just, just hitting that light again and again. <laughs> what, a, what a shitty time that guy had, man. All that time in the future and all he gets is a couple lights. <laughs> yeah, yes really. no. All the technology. You couldn't you could think of a, of a voice replicator no, thing? No, I, I have a feeling that people really didn't like Christopher yeah. Pike that much. Yeah. <laughs> I know they can transport people to other planets. They can't uh, with two know, different God. buttons. He he got he got dropped off in like the free Starfleet clinic. You know, yeah, yeah right, <laughs> right. Oh my God! There are these guys, the vacant lot with Paul Greenberg, who used to do a bit with Pike ordering takeout for drive through at McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you want to? Do I catch it? Oh, that's horrible! That's horrible. Uh, Any others? And of course, when I uh, with with this topic, it's obviously excluding one that's already in space. Right. Yes, I got one. I'm going to go with the Necronomicon in space. Well, yeah. Oh, like from uh, from Evil Evil Dead. Dead? Evil Dead. They take well, that's it up. The, that's the missing movie. Yeah, because yeah. but that, that's how they ended Ash versus Evil. Ash versus Evil Dead. Well, the, the yeah, really? freeze, remember? It's, always, it's always like an apocalyptic. I didn't thing. see the last one. Well, the yeah, he ends up, he wakes up in the future and he's still oh. in the he's still fighting the freaking deadites. Remember? The last scene in the last episode of Ash versus Evil Dead, it's like it's in the future. Well, I know it's Holy in the shit. I, it's it's not in space, though. Is he in the spaceship, though? He, I thought he was. Or if he's was not he? in space, that if it's maybe not, oh. but it's but it's a he made him. A, I can't remember, but he's in. I can't it's remember like a either. futuristic room, like it's the future for sure. Yeah. And remember, we we have they have already had Pinhead in. Outer well, they space. have had that, yes. Bloodlines, yes, which is Hellraiser Bloodlines, which, which is great. It's a better movie than people give it credit. For. Yes, yes, there's some there's some yeah. bad stuff in it, but I, but it's still know, fun though. It's still yeah. fun. Yeah, and I love I love the reveal at the end that I don't. It's fantastic. Want to it's yeah. one of the best. Yeah. So or let good. the last train to Basan guys. Let them make <laughs> <in> space. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, that yeah. that outbreak on a sp- space station that could yeah. be bad. There you go. Yeah. 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 Sure. Well, that was ah. nice. Yeah. Good. That was fun. So Sean, so Sean, that's your it's your turn now to, to pick. Okay. Yes. I will pick John. I will pick your number four. My number four. Oh, you guys have been to an incredible amount of conventions in your life. What is the best T-shirt you've ever seen? Oh, oh. That's a good... <laughs> do you mean okay. do you mean a convention T-shirt or just a no best any T-shirt, T-shirt right? at the any... convention? Have right, you right, seen okay. something that you go, "Holy fuck, look at that!" Yes, yes. And yes, did you wow. buy it? Yes. Okay. I did. I did. There's a lot, but man. Yeah. It? Okay. I would say, I mean, this is, it may be an obvious one, but I think it was just very clever and I did buy it. I forget. It probably is, was a monster palooza. It was a, a black t shirt that had the Camp Crystal Lake logo <laughs> on the front. And, and in the back, it had Counselor. Yeah. I have that yeah. shirt. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's fantastic. Wow. I love that, that shirt. Because no, that's, that's, that's awesome. Because that's something you could see the character wearing in the movie. So, yeah. so yeah, that's, <laughs> that would be that. <laughs> all right i got one all right sure mm-hmm. this was out of monster palooza and it's probably from the same guy that sells that shirt <laughs> yeah. uh but it's a t-shirt version of the animated monster sequence <gasps> of yeah. abdick costello meets frankenstein yes, yes. Oh. So I've, seen, have, I've seen it it's beautiful so you have like you know all the monsters are walking across this sort of moonlit night on yeah. a hill yeah and uh and you know so there's a cartoony Frankenstein monster and a wolf man. Yeah, it's uh it's great. Yeah, that's a great one. I, I what think a co- great my, idea. 
might be Hollywood Book and Poster that sells that, but I'm oh, not yeah? sure. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yeah, I love that thing. I would like, that's one of those ones where you go, I should buy three of these. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good one. All right. I think I saw this in Monster Palooza, but but someone was wearing it. I think it's actually it, it might have been Adam Holtz wearing it. And, <laughs> and I was just like, that is the coolest thing I've ever seen. It's the Beatles running from a hard day's night, but they're running from Godzilla. <laughs> that's oh, that's, that's cool. great. brilliant. Uh, that's yeah. great. <laughs> I love it. That's nice. Oh, actually, John, one of the ones that I saw that when I saw it, it was at Comic-Con and this is about, this is about 14 years ago and I saw it and I freaked out and it's the whole shirt is like blue and it had these two eyes and this giant mouth. And basically it was the abominable snow monster from Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And, <laughs> and so I, I, my wife and I were huge fans of the classic, uh, Rudolph. Rankin Bass, uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. And so I bought those immediately. And I think I even bought, because I wasn't sure which size would work. So I think I bought like a large and extra large. And and so, yeah, and, and we still have those. We're, they're special shirts that we only wear around the holidays. Cool. I like that. Very good. Is that everybody? All right. I think so. So James, it's your turn. Okay. I'm going to go with Larry's number one. <gasps> oh, oh, dun, me. Dun, oh, dun. everyone's. Oh, wow. Okay. So your favorite cereal mascot. <laughs> oh, well, that's that's, that's easy for me. Yeah. It's yeah. it's it's the, it's it's everybody's favorite delicious outer space buddy, Quisp. Quisp. <gasps> yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought you were gonna say Count Chocula. I like I it's... love those would be my second choice would be the monster cereals, but Quisp, first of all, it's still maybe my single favorite cereal. And yeah. I love Quisp because he's a little he's kind of like a little rascal he's like you know he's he causes trouble he, he makes he's an alien he's but he's like smart and crafty he he uh gives quake a run for his money all the time and yeah he's just cool he's cool he just flies around his little saucer i love quake. Like you. <laughs> yeah it's cool that's that's right up there with me i would yeah. say my next one would be freakies oh yeah oh yeah. my gosh it's freakies didn't it have just too much sugar in it <laughs> not for me. Not, uh, I don't remember it having too much sugar in the day. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's true. Those those monsters were great. Uh, how about John? Mine was, and it was also, I think, the worst product to ever come out of a movie, <laughs> which was the Ghostbuster cereal. <laughs> oh, wow. There was a there was a Ghostbuster cereal. Yeah, that's when the movie funny. came out, and I forgot who said it was. I love this movie so much. I wish I could eat it. <laughs> <laughs> were they like, what's it like little ghost marshmallows or something? Yeah. 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 I think, yeah. I, think, and, yeah. Uh, I, I never yeah. tried it though. I don't know what it tasted like. Uh, like I don't know if it was more. Captain it was Crunchy not or... good at all. It was, <laughs> just, it was almost like a Carvel, the cookie puss where they would just do it in different shapes. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I'm sure it was a knockoff of some other cereal. Right. Right. They, Ah, fuck it. Kids will eat it. Just make it green. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, it's probably oh pretty, pretty nasty. I don't remember that. Well, oh, wow. Speaking of uh, speaking of movie tie-ins, I, I dug this out of storage. Oh, my gosh. Oh, you know, C3PO's C3PO. I, 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 I always remembered those, but I never tried it. I wonder what that tasted like. Like every other cereal? Yeah. yeah like Just Cheerios? Yeah. James, C3, is that still, does, that, does that still have stuff in it? No, it's an empty box. I didn't. Oh, I didn't. Uh, it's a cool yeah. box, though. Is that? Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Nice. So I, I don't know that that C three PO is my favorite mascot. I, I, there was a bear that w- I think was for honey cri- like super sure, honey honey cri- cri- sugar super bear. Sugar bear. Sugar bear. Yeah, sugar yeah. Bear. And he was doing uh, Bing Crosby. He's no, like, he was no. always no. He was always high. That was him. I mean, he's like drunk or something. Like no, he, he, you're he, right. He was like he was like he I was, was always. I, like, I, I thought he was doing mellow. Martin, but you know, yeah, yeah. He was yeah, basically yeah. the same thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But the cereal itself, I never was that into. It was that was kind of too sugary for me in a weird way. Like it yeah. was, it had that glaze on it, and then the glaze yeah. would come off in the milk, and I didn't <laughs> yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. and then get in your blood. I don't like glazed and... milk. <laughs> you guys know me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I was. I, I always, I, I always felt like he was a, a drug pusher in a way. Super sugar <laughs> crisp. You know, it was. It was, it was super sugar as well. Was like, 
Hey, how about some cereal with this? <laughs> you know, little weed. With... I, 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 prefer, I, I prefer someone like happy and peppy and colorful. Like I like, like Toucan Sam from Fruit Loops. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, it came yeah. out from 1963, and uh, you know he's been voiced by a number of people over the Toucan years. Toucan seemed but, to always be like a little more. Wasn't Toucan kind of? He came across like more high society in a way. Well, yeah. he, 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 he came off a little British. like he was better than us. And yeah, I mean, a little and, bit. And, and, and let's admit it, he he was. You know, <laughs> true. He, he first of yeah. all, he knew his fruit. And, yes, he and, did. and 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 <laughs> I I respect I respected him. I respect he, a bird that you knows not? its fruit. Yeah, true. Well, he <laughs> had he had like a little British. It was like, hey, hello, everyone. It's two cans. Yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. So, he's o- Oxford educated. Yes, a yes, he was. Mascot like that should be hawking like a nutritious cereal for <laughs> brainy people, not. The uh, most sugary red dye number six. No, he wants crap, to keep. He know. wants to keep oh, you down. He wants, I guess, you know, yeah, I guess. for the masses. Oh, for, uh, for those regular Joes, yeah. Well, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See how now, about, now, now, now you make me feel bad. Now you make me feel bad. Now you make me want to put my little mascot away. Oh you know, no, I, I, I like. I, I, yeah, I, I like the fondness can. for him, but I, like he was, about, he was better than the what's his face, the Coco. Co- Co- oh, oh, I like oh. Sunny. Sunny. Well, Sunny, well, Sunny, but no, Sunny, but Sunny was like was, a literal, a literal drug addict. He was like, no, yeah. he, he yes. was like, he was an addict. I enjoyed yeah. Sunny. He was like, strung yeah. out. He was, he was hyperactive, and he needed <laughs> yeah. Ritalin. And it always, yeah, he did. I, it, it, when I saw, when I saw, when I saw Sunny, it made me think of some kids at school. I'm like, man, he's that guy's just like you know <laughs> Pat Burns over there. He was like, <laughs> and, no, and and so I did. I was not a fan. Does anybody uh, ever? Yeah. Does anybody ever pick like? My favorite's the cowboy from Sugar Pops. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Or Mary Lou Retton on Wheaties. The rooster <laughs> from Cornflakes. Like, yeah. Oh, this was... <laughs> True. You're yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. All okay. Right. Great. So this, is, this has been good. Okay. Good fun. Okay. <laughs> so believe it or not, that was James. So Matt, it's your turn to choose. All right. I'm going to pick something from Larry. <gasps> oh, hi, Larry. Row. And Larry, um, I I don't remember what numbers have been picked for you, but I'm going to say just one, just one. one. I've only been picked once. And, and what one. number was that one? One, one. OK, I am going to pick three. Ah, uh, you guys are going to like this one. Who is your favorite TV detective? Oh, oh well. come on. I think we all agree with this. We all, right? Well, well, uh, yeah. Matlock. (laughs) (laughs) Heck, Ramsey. Well, Matlock in space. (laughs) Well, I've I've actually I've I've brought this up before. It's a little you know off off the the other end of this, but it's uh, Ellery Queen because Uh, that's your favorite. No, that was it was James. That would be my second choice. I'm not saying that he's as interesting or colorful or inventive as Columbo. But that show had me hooked. And if Jim Hutton played a great Queen, show, David great Wayne show. played his dad. And the fun of it was that he he didn't disclose the killer at, at, until the end. You didn't know who the killer was. You had to guess it. You had to guess it along with him. Right. And it was it was a true whodunit lovers show, because I've said this before in the like in the fourth act, the end of the fourth act, he turns to the camera and says, yes. so did you figure it out. <laughs> Remember this happened. This happened. This person said this. Right. All right. Let's find out. Yeah. Come break. Come I don't back. know. I, oh, it's, right. it's too much like a you know an after school special with that. No, hey, everybody, not, yeah. no. Let's remember not. all our numbers. You know, it's a, it's, it's, a, a, it's a mystery show. It's a whodunit mystery show. It was. It's great. It's. Fine. it's, it's it, it, to, look, I I appreciate what they were trying to do. Yes, they're doing a classic whodunit. It, it was. But it was forties. It was took place in the forties. It was. It was like a. Vintage sorry, style guys. show. If you say anything else but Columbo, well, of course, no, you're Columbo's my favorite. Dead to me, I like, said it was my. Second I'm going to walk out of here. And <laughs> I'll, I'll leave my house. That's how annoyed Ooh. I am. Ellery Queen's my second choice. I love it. <laughs> it has to do with the fact that it was also William Levinson and and Link who Richard, created Richard Ellery. Levinson yes, that's William right. Link. Right, but exactly. Ellery Queen was created, and it only lasted one season, and then yeah. they made Columbo, and history was made. The thing is, like I, I again, I respected what they were trying to do, but I didn't find. Ellery Queen. What was that actor's name? Jim Hutton. Jim, Jim Hutton. Hutton. 
no charisma whatsoever. Really? Find, oh my didn't god! Didn't find him interesting whatsoever. Opposite from me, him and David Wayne is his dad, and yeah. and uh, Flank yeah. Flanagan, the reporter character, like all the characters. It was just a. It was like it was an ode to forties. He reminded me. But, but That's like, what it was. I want to, you know, kiss me deadly. I want. Uh, it was no, no it's a prime time yeah. TV show in the seventies. So yeah, no, that, I, to me, he was he came off to me too much like. Uh, who was the second guy in Mash? Uh, was it <laughs> Jay Honeycutt? <laughs> oh, Henry Mike Morgan? Farrell. No, oh, Mike, Mike Farrell. Mike yeah, Farrell. He, Farrell. He, he came up to Mike Farrell to me. Wow. Wow. Okay. Well, again, I'm not arguing with you though. I mean, Columbo will and always be the greatest. First of all, the greatest detective character, detective character performance by that actor. But also, I'll say for the show too, because it was I I, I couldn't believe somebody made a show that was. A who done it in reverse? I mean, that's it's, brilliant. it's just brilliant. genius uh, to think that. Oh well, our viewers really going to sit around for an hour or no, two hour, ninety minutes, and watch a detective try to trip up and you know catch this killer that we already seen exactly how he did the crap. Yes, because yeah. it's written so well and because of the way they do it, it's it's just genius. And the yes. fact that Columbo is like, so, you know, now, especially if after you've watched a, a few episodes, you know what the format is and you know how this mm-hmm. is going, you know, who did it. And so it really goes to show you how brilliant Peter Falk was yeah. because yes. it was like waiting for a guitar solo. It was like when he came in there, when he finally arrived, you were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. do it, man. Annoy these people. <laughs> but, I know. but it was intelligent. It was really intelligent. You're yes. trying to figure out, you know, how how is this criminal going to get away with it? Is he going to get away with it? Yeah. And, you know, and there are things when I, I just don't think that they're going to solve this. That I know. I look, that's when I would watch Columbo. I wasn't 100 percent sure that it would end up at how it ended. Yeah. Up, well, it know. was one of the few it was one of the few mainstream primetime shows that that actually did make you think, but that was popular in long running. You know what I mean? Like it, like it could have been a show that like was just too, too difficult and too dense for people to get or, but it, somehow it wasn't, you know, like you had shows like Starsky and Hutch and Beretta and they were just ch- shooting up sh- yeah. bad guys, but yeah. Columbo was a thinking man's detective show. Yeah. But like, which especially interesting because especially when it's premiered in the seventies, you didn't have too many thinking man type detective show. You know what I mean? Like there wasn't, mm. It was act, you know, action shows, car chases. Like, I mean, mm. my God, he never had to carry a gun. You know, right. like, I mean, that's it's right. like, I that's mean, right. it's, it's just, it's interesting that they somehow found that sweet spot of like challenging you, but still like you could sit back and just kind of enjoy it and watch him do his thing. You know, and just, did you say you know, TV detective? I did. TV detective. Okay. I now, did. have you guys seen Peter Falk on the Dean Martin roast in character as Columbo? Oh my God. One of the funniest. Oh, you got to look at, I have to watch see that. Ever. Was it like one particular roast or what did he do? It's Sinatra. Yeah. Uh, Wow. And so he is, he is Columbo to Sinatra and he keeps getting like uh, starstruck with Sinatra. He's like, he keeps (laughs) like, like, could you sign this? And then he keeps asking him (laughs) to like, you know what? Actually, could you write this instead? (laughs) And I gotta see that. He brought lasagna or something. He brought, he brought lasagna, it. right? From his <laughs> wife made lasagna. It's Columbo. It's Columbo, but oh my god, I gotta see that. And then he's yeah, giving him instructions like, "You're gonna want to heat that up in a way." You know, like, oh, <laughs> so good. That's great. Oh, I've gotta see that. Oh, that's awesome. yeah. That's someone that gives you that much joy in a performance. You know, like it's oh, just. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you. Great. Well, that's my, a good one. My grandfather is a kid. I'm going to go with the Rockford Files. Ah, he loves that's it. a good one. Uh, that's, that's a good one, one too. Well, James Garner so made that show. much as a kid. And yeah. what was it? Sonny, the guy with the beard, whenever he showed up, you're going, yeah, yeah. going to be nuts, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good I, one, too. I, I, he's, James Garner is just pure charisma. Talk about yeah. Yeah, another, another person that can just carry a show. I mean, yeah. he's just so great, you know. I just watched you know, uh, the um, gunfighter movies. Oh, the yeah, your local yeah. Gunfighter, your local gunfighter. Oh, local yeah. Sheriff. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Those are so much fun. You know, I saw James Garner shooting uh, something on the Third Street Promenade in Santa Monica, as obviously many years ago. And they had to move down the street. And he picked up his own chair and carried it down wow. the street. He didn't wait for a PA to nice. do it. I'm just like, that is class. Yeah, that is, is class. That's nice. And would it surprise anybody? 
No. No. No, right. Yeah. No. Yeah. Wow. That's great. Another James Garner film that I think all of you would enjoy if you haven't seen it is the Americanization of Emily. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Patty Carr. Wow. It's so good. And he he plays this coward who ends up being like in the front lines on D-Day. <laughs> nice. it's, it's great. It's yeah. Wow. Cool. All right. All so right. John, we're back to you, buddy. Why don't you choose? I am going with Sean. Your number six. Number six. Okay. All right. Curious to see what you guys say for this one. If you had to choose a different field to be an obsessive nerd about, what would it be? <laughs> in other words, in other words, not horror and sci-fi movies and TV shows and toy collecting. What other, I guess, what other field or uh, area of pop culture could you be obsessive about that wasn't about horror, sci-fi, and monsters? Is there? Oh anything? my gosh, Sean, that's like yeah. interesting. It's just any oh, other, what else? Some other th- interest in in the world that you could like collect well, or be into. Okay, well, I, 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 the first thing is, you know, I've always thought if I wasn't into what I was into. What if I said, am I able to say the study about uh, astronomy in outer space, maybe trying to become an astronaut? What about that? Is that would that work? Yeah, like in other words, like, like the s- space, space sciences, the, the space sciences is probably what, you know, space sciences for me, probably. Right. I mean, I'm always excited about hearing about the, the spaceships going up and, and, and things like that and satellites and right. always finding out about, hey, we're getting our the satellites going further out. I mean, I love all that stuff. I mean, it's like science fact, you know, right, we're still right. learning. So, I mean, there are times when I, I thought, gee, I would have loved to have been an astronaut, but truthfully, I wasn't that as good at math and, you know, I may get a little dizzy going up. So I, but it was a field, think... that, but it was the area that you're interested in. You could kind of yeah, get, you yeah. get passionate and, about. Yeah. Yeah. And, and every once in a while when things come up, I get really excited about it. So, right, yeah. right, right. But That's you know, I, I stand by my decision of where I went. So I <laughs> know <laughs> <No, of course. laughs> we're very glad you did. <laughs> yes, yeah, we think, are all very happy. I think I'm uh, I'm along kind of the si- similar lines to you, Larry, in that I think because growing up as a little kid, one of the first things I really got interested in was dinosaurs, and I think for a while I was interested in archaeology. You know, I think oh. it's something that if I if I early on in my life if I decide to pursue, you know, maybe it could have been that just you know just archaeology going in. Digging up, you know, dinosaur you mean, bones and exploring. You mean like, like, pa- you mean like paleontology? paleontology? Paleontology, yeah, yeah. That, all that whole kind of field, I think, is something I could have gotten really into. You know, if I didn't go into the area of you know entertainment, cinema, and movies and stuff. Yeah. How about how about anybody else? I think I will say, I think I could be really obsessive about Japanese culture. Mm, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. and everything. I, that. I mean, and that would include movies, obviously, but also right. history and art, and I all of it I find, and food, of course. Mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all of it I find fascinating, and um, there's something that calls to me. And mm, I, 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 and I can see that every time when we go, when we went to Japan, just walking down the streets and the architecture of the buildings, mm-hmm. and the way that people interact in that culture. It's just, it's so fascinating. And I have such respect. Yeah. I would, I could see myself really getting into the weeds of all of that. I would have to say there's very little that I would not be interested in. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's cool. Um, This is also popular culture. So this might be a little bit of a cheat, but if I weren't into all this other stuff, I think I'd, I'd be inclined to be into Shakespeare. Really? Wow. Yeah. Really? Because years ago, I saw a Joseph Papp downtown New York. I saw Christopher Walken play <laughs> Coriolanus, which is not one of Shakespeare's better known plays, but just the fact that they did it in period like gangster clothes. And I've seen enough variations on how they treat different Shakespeare plays. Mm. That I'm, I'm interested in that. Uh, certainly the language is quotable left and right. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm always impressed when people know him enough to, to quote him. I, I've been to Stratford in, um, is it Stratford? The yeah. town in, in England. Yes, where uh, Gene like and I, yeah. It, 
if if Disneyland had Shakespeare Land, that would be Stratford upon Avon, right? <laughs> right, right. Oh. You know, thatched roof houses and all these yeah, tourist yes. shops. It's with beautiful. Shakespeare. Yeah, beautiful. And I and I'm just I I think it's just really cool that he had this contained body of work. Mm-hmm. A lot of it's a lot of it's historical. It's certainly it's it's liter it's literature. It's literary. Yeah, I, yeah. I'd be I'd be into exploring that more. I will not live long enough to do that. <laughs> but if I had a second life, that would be my answer. Wow, That's good. I there like that. Cool. We're learning something, learning something new about each other. That's yeah. neat. <laughs> Getting How about to know John? you? What about John? Well, after hearing, I I'd want something as big as that in my life. Like that's why I would go with K-pop. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Uh, now. Uh, <laughs> I think I would love, and I loved it as a kid and even as an adult, uh, magic when you ah, first learn about uh-huh. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And you learn about the amazing Randy, because I sure. think there's so many different ways, because maybe I don't think I would have the skill set or be able to put the 10,000 hours of, you know, card stuff like those guys. Yeah, do. yeah. Right. But yeah. man, I love that skeptic society with Randy when you Me found too. that stuff. Yeah, up. yeah. Like, uh, a really cool life to uh, prove people to be liars. Sure. You know? like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love James Randy's books. I mean, I've, yeah. I've read I got them all. all of them. The Ricky J, the big books, The History of Magic. It just mm. seems like such a big thing that would just, it's something that you can very easily nerd out on. And, totally. Uh, and me, like, I remember Craig Doyle took me to a place once and we got to see a card mechanic who was like the number one or number two guy w- with cards. And uh, nobody knew who he was, but I think he did like high end poker games and, or he would come in and cool games out and stuff. But the magicians were there, were all the top magicians in the world, and you didn't know who any of these guys were. Hmm. You know, but guys were whispering in the room as each guy walked into the room, and you're going, This just looks like your uncle's neighbor. Right. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Right, right. <clears throat> no, wow. I think part of that probably is to uh, you know, that's how you can steal from people. By looking yeah. like that. <laughs> right, right. Well, right. And that's what well, that's I got to meet Ricky J. I couldn't talk. I was so excited. Plus, he mm. just didn't really want to talk to anybody either. So. <laughs> well, and it's funny, that's Randy's thing, which is that, you know, here I'm doing tricks, and you know that I'm doing tricks, but what if I told you they weren't tricks? Yeah. Right, right. And at the end, you found out Randy also had a secret in his life. <laughs> well. Yeah, and he finally came out, and you're going like, "Well, of course, who cares? <laughs> you're an right. awesome, awesome adult. You're everything I wish I could be." Yeah, mm. very good. Him. No, that's a I great like one, and I have to say that whenever I run into anyone who can do any kind of close-up magic or you know yeah. card tricks or whatever, I, I melt. It's like yeah, yeah it's me too. Yeah, I know. It just makes too. my day. Yep, I awesome. stop trying to figure out tricks when i watch them now i just look at the artistry of it and yes. to go yeah yeah wow, this guy spent months years learning how to do this thing so i appreciate that more than going yeah he, he i see what he did mm-hmm. yeah yeah see john i'm just like you i i just love to just let it flow over me and just stuck up the, the illusion it's like and yeah. and not try to figure out it's just that was wonderful that was yeah. so neat yeah. i love that i'm with you larry nice one john okay cool. mm. uh my turn i'm gonna go with uh james your number one <laughs> all right this this might this might take a while to answer but oh are you kidding U- universal <laughs> Stu- universal studios in 1949 announced a monster movie called house of the mummy with five monsters the mummy and four other ones Mm -hmm. the movie never got made but if we were going to project the fantasy group of universal monsters to be in house of the mummy you have the mummy and four other ones what would those other four monsters be okay wait a minute can we make up our own monsters no, they have to be part of the Universal Monsters camp. Well, from okay, that time. So, 
So definitely Frankenstein has to, so the mummy's in it. Yeah. Frankenstein is in it. And then I need someone to be kind of, you know, the the guy who figures things out and and so Dracula. So mm-hmm. Dra- so Frankenstein Dracula and the wolfman's got to be in there to kind of foil the plan but then he turns into a wolf. And just to, <laughs> and just to shake things up because it's by a swamp, the creature from the Black Lagoon. There you oh, go. Wait, but no, is that, he is, no, 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 he, he doesn't exist no, yet. Though, no, no, right? no, 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 Sean. Uh, I, you no, could, I, w- I would allow the creature. I would allow okay, the creature. He sh- he's around. He's been around well, forever. That's true. Right. But since the movie wasn't made true. until 1964, right. if I'm going to play by James's rules, I would, no, say, I, I, I would say, well, then, uh, okay. How about and Doctor Jekyll, Mister Hyde. Well, it wasn't universal until the Abbott Costello version, but yes, sure. So yeah. that one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay, so good. there. Great. Nice. So it's, it's five altogether, including the mummy, right? Right. It has to include the mummy, but four other ones. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you're looking at, I assume this is intended as, you know, you had House of Frankenstein, then House of Dracula, then you would have, have House of the Mummy. Right. And I always missed, I always wish that they didn't include the mummy character in those mashups you know which they mm-hmm. which they did so but i think i for me i think along with the mummy you would have frankenstein's monster dracula and the wolfman and i th- you know and remember like how would they would in, in those other house movies they would say oh the the mad doctor or <laughs> right the hunchback the hunchback. Uh, nurse and then they count those as monsters like no yeah. Yeah. Oh, so i think but i think would be interesting in the to throw into the mix you have the mummy frankenstein's monster dracula the wolfman and the invisible man Mm. I think that would be because that because yeah. you have talk about you know yeah you have the more intellectual you know yes. I, I think him and Dracula together and then you have the more feral Wolfman you have the monster yeah. Frank, Frankenstein monster and I think that'd be a good combination that'd be good, good Sean yeah. can I go next yeah yeah sure here we go so you didn't say which mummy no so I'm gonna say <laughs> it's and I'm not going yummy mummy okay <laughs> um, it's the Karloff mummy, right? Oh, yeah, yeah uh-huh. right. Yes. And Karis. So you got two mummies. Oh, oh, there you go. Nice. And then I would throw in the Abbott and Costello mummy. <laughs> Claris. <laughs> Three mummies. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then we've got son of Dracula. Lon Chaney Jr. Wait, Lon Chaney Jr. Okay. Nice. And the fourth monster is actually the hero of the film. And it's the invisible agent. <laughs> John Hall is the, and, yeah, I like that. And so my story is that Dracula, son of Dracula, is working with the Nazis to harness the power of the mummies. That's cool. I like that. Ooh, wow. And use them nice. because they're like this. They're kind. It's like shockwaves. They're this. Yeah, they're unstoppable the army. Yeah, slow, but the, slow, but they're slow. unstoppable. <laughs> slow, but they right. get there. There's no. Yeah, right. It's like uh, if you were gonna use the hammer paradigm that mummy moves slow but he's he's gonna get you right right but like yeah that. so so yeah son of dracula would be because i want to bring back some monsters that you know maybe didn't get as much screen time Shh, yeah sure. I agree. and i would have loved to have seen another invisible agent movie yeah me too wow. i know that should have been a whole wow. franchise yeah yeah cool nice John, I like any choice, but what I would want to do is turn it into Battle Royale. <laughs> put them all on an island. It's right. I like or it. be killed. Sure. And I would think I would like the Invisible Man to win, but I think Dracula would win. Supernatural well, being, well, yeah, well, possibly. Well, how does, well, but how does Dracula find the Invisible Man? <laughs> I think he's so he can see things at different spectrums. No, no he might. He might be no. able to sense him though. He, might no, have, he can definitely you know. smell him. He can hey. sense his blood. Yeah, if he turns into out. a bat, he can have radar. He can or, reach yeah. out into people's minds from far yeah. away. We know that. True, true. Yeah, I think Dracula is a lot stronger than people give him credit for occasionally. Yeah. But, but well, it'd be an interesting that, battle, though. Well, I, I just think you're shitting all over the Invisible Man. So I think he'd kind of... I think he see the Invisible Man win. He just can't be Dracula. Super yeah, nice. yeah. anything with Nazis. I always felt would be a great movie, which would be when I first got here, I had to pitch a movie and I couldn't think of anything. So when I got in there, I said uh Hitler versus Dracula. 
<laughs> okay, <laughs> that's great. Yeah. And I said it opened up with uh, Hitler's captured Dracula, and he's got him in a big tub of holy water. Uh, and that's how the movie begins. And, uh, and then I just ran out of steam and then excused myself. <laughs> that's cool because you know Hitler. Hitler was known to uh, be dabbling in the occult. You that's know? right. Oh, yeah. Yes, right. Yeah. that could be that could be cool. Like he travels to Transylvania and finds the coffin, and you know, wasn't so. there wasn't there the a uh, night gallery episode where the Nazis go to like they're invading Transylvania, and oh they, yeah, and yeah. like it, it's either I'm trying to remember if it's either Dracula or the whole town are vampires, but like yeah, Dracula I think is their protector. Yeah, you're right. And well, that makes me think of the keep also, sure, which was, yeah. was it's not Dracula, but it's like an evil force. Well, and know? then there's Frankenstein conquers the world where the, yeah, the Nazis right. storm into Dr. Frankenstein's lab in the beginning. Yes. Did, you do a, did you do a Nazis in horror episode? Or Frankenstein's army, the found footage film. Yeah, yeah. Which is a lot of fun. That's a great one. That's if a you, great one. Uh, the, all you have to do is just forget about working out the logic of how someone they is filming filmed, this. Yeah, time yeah, time. yeah. But it's good, though. It's good. But it's it's good. Yeah, that's a good one. I would add to my battle royale where they would be invisible man potion you can win. <laughs> so now you <laughs> can get guys invisible or Mr. High potion. Or, or yeah, or yeah, or what if like what if the Invisible Man turns all of the other monsters invisible? Yeah, oh, wow. the Wolf Man invisible, Frankenstein oh, monster or, running around invisible, or the other and way. They turn on the battle royale guys that brought him there by being all invisible. Yeah, and yeah. They save a lot of money making them all invisible at the end. <laughs> what if Dracula turns the Invisible Man into a vampire? Ooh, yeah. Ooh. That could be guy getting bit As by a invisible wolf man, man. Turns Frankenstein's monster into a wolf Frankenstein. Yeah, that would be wolf cool. Mixing all yes. the yes, mixing all the. There you go. That's cool. this, like this is all. This is all Hollywood gold here. I know. You know we're giving really, away yeah. way too much. Yeah, yeah, it really is. But and this then is they all make the sweet love to too. each other. <laughs> all right, we don't. We don't need that part. All right, so Sean, it's your turn, buddy. To, to pick okay yeah <clears throat> okay i will take matt's number six has that been used yet nope it has <laughs> not number six okay matt. okay <laughs> uh-oh what <laughs> what non-jerry anderson production would be wonderful in super marionation <laughs> wow that is good okay wow it could be any any sci-fi or horror. It could be movie anything. Or... Yeah. Okay. Anything. Anything. Well, I mean, sh- no. sure, but it, it, to keep giant. within the you know yeah, spirit yeah. of monster party, yeah. we should. Right. Okay. Yeah. I think I, I think I got one, Matt. I think you're gonna like this one. Okay. The human centipede. <laughs> oh. <laughs> give, no. give that give that give that man a cigar. It's like this no. is terrible. No. <laughs> I have to shit. To, to, <laughs> to get them to all walk at the you know, do that crawl <laughs> yeah, do that. when they're sewn together <laughs> with strings. Wow. Oh man, I I would oh. I live for that. <laughs> Somebody's gonna make it. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> no. All right. Anybody else? We don't need to. We don't need to see a puppet version yes, of that. Yes, we do. Actually, we, we kind of. We actually, do. we almost kind of have already in. Uh, Meet the what people. What do you call it? No, the um. What's the, the South Park guys? That movie they made. Team Team oh, America. Yeah, yeah, Team America. America. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Had some pretty graphic sex scenes in yes. it, which yeah. uh, came the closest thing you're going to get to a human centipede yeah. marination film. True. <clears throat> Anybody else? Might be. Might be kind of fun to do like uh, Road Warrior. With all the little toy oh, toy uh, that's great. I like that. That would be awesome. Uh, yeah, because you're, re- you're remote control. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. Because now, now you're, you know, it's like all those vehicles in the Jerry Anderson movies are so futuristic. Yeah, yeah. right. Get it right. down and dirty. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a brilliant idea. <laughs> I, I would that. love to see that. <laughs> yeah, uh, fantastic. <laughs> Anyone else? Wow. I'm gonna go with. Uh, the Blair Witch Project. <laughs> oh, that, like a, a, a close up on that marinade. Like, yeah. The snot coming out of a nose. That would be great. Oh, Incredibly <laughs> straight, do it. Yeah. And, and, yes. and, and, and right. And play it 
totally straight. <laughs> totally straight. Yeah. Yeah. At the end, puppets just against the wall. Just like <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. Well, I think an- I think another thing with vehicles I thought would be cool would be what about Speed Racer? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sure. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean yeah. that would be kind of fun, you know. Uh, yes, you have a, like villain- a, mari- a marionette Spridal and Chim Chim. Yeah, Chim Chim. <laughs> right. And then some of the bad guy cars, you know, would be could be kind of cool. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's a good that one. Be fun. Yeah, oh, that's a good one, Sean. I, Ni- I, nice I, one. I would want to see. John Carpenter's the thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, right. Can you, ima- right. can you imagine how crazy that would be? <laughs> wow. Be awesome. It's like that that artist who was sitting across from us at Monster Palooza who did the uh Rudolph Rankin Bass as the thing with <laughs> yeah, yeah. mashup. Yeah, Yukon you, you Cornelius. Is, yeah. Yeah, that was great. Oh, wow. another one that might be fun would be Sleeper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Sure. <laughs> Wow. Uh, yeah, well. Okay. So, James. <laughs> James, it's your turn. Okay. I'm going to go with uh, one of John's topics. Let's go with number two. Number two. Oh, this is uh, what I asked Matt before we got on. We were talking. Who do you feel or who is your favorite best celebrity nerd? But you got to take out Guillermo del Toro. <laughs> oh, oh, that's a good question. Oh. Okay, yeah. well, I have someone. I was be someone, an actor, I, it could be a writer. It could be. I, I have someone who is recent. Position. Yeah, who? Well, at Comic Con, I actually didn't know that Casper Van Dien was such a nerd. Mm. Ah, and oh, he came right. on the yeah. show with his lovely wife, and as we started to talk, I didn't know that he liked a lot of the same things that I liked. Yep. And I, I had no idea. And, and it was just as we talked about this, you know, I really just thought, you know, he's just this actor and he he got put in this movie and then kind of some of the movies he did were so similar or whatever. But no, he he loves science fiction. He loves horror. Yep. He loves these action That's films. Right. And and then his wife, who is, you know, big Wonder Woman fan. I mean, they, they, they're like us. Yes. Yeah, and, and, totally. and we had an absolute blast. And if I remember correctly, it's another one of those things where he was scheduled to only stay for like 30 minutes. He ended up staying longer. He and his yeah. wife spent mm. over an hour and we had an absolute blast. So yes, we did. it was a real surprise for me. So yeah. he's actually my new like favorite uh, celebrity actor who is also a big nerd. And he admits it. He has a huge yeah. collection in his. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Cool. That's great. It's a good one. Nice. Hey, can I do one that is a person that's dead? Sure. Sure, yeah, yeah. Johnny Ramone. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Johnny oh. Ramone was a big horror movie collector. Like, uh, he loves, kind of like along the lines of uh, Kirk Hammett, he collected mm-hmm. a lot of uh, movie memorabilia. But mm-hmm. I, I know he right, collected right. other stuff. But, yeah, he was really into that stuff. And I think Marky is as well. Cool, yeah. I'd say one of them for me would be John Fravo, you know, because he's yeah. just, oh, he's, he's, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, one of the most powerful people in Hollywood right now. But I mean, yeah, yeah, he is, he may not be single handedly responsible for the MCU, but he certainly had a lot to do with its origin and shepherding it, this incredible franchise. But he's also just a huge fan, like, a fan of like monsters and old horror movies. And I mean, he's, he's into all that stuff, you know, like, uh, he's just i think he's just you know he's he's like the nerd that made it you know yeah right <laughs> yeah yeah well, really really made it <laughs> you know sean I'd, I, sean I'd also go as far to say look we were kind of crapping all over star wars he kind of helped save some of the I mean, star wars universe yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah 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 all the various projects you know there are there are hits and misses but i mean there's been a lot of great stuff that has come out under his supervision you know, because well, he, he Man, gets it. Iron Man launched the whole MCU, and that it, was pretty much perfect. I mean, it, it was, yeah, it, like it changed. Effort. It was a game changer. It really was. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I think for sure, that's that's my nice. pick. James, how about you? I'm gonna go with Hugh Hefner, who oh, was yeah, not, sure. not known for being a nerd, but right, he's right. a huge, huge movie and horror nerd. Yeah, yes. and. People think Hugh Hefner, they think, oh, the mansion, the orgies, the parties, the Playboy <laughs> magazine, Rapist. all that. Rapist. <laughs> well, well, okay, hey, you know, some, on, people yeah. do, you know, some people do. Some people are going to go there. Yeah. But 
he <laughs> was seriously into a uh, silent film, majorly into the Lon Chaney senior films. Yeah. He, yeah. Uh, he had a, a USC uh, restoration fund where he helped restore classic films. That's he awesome. helped, he helped to save the Hollywood sign from destruction, not once, but twice. And uh, nice. his Halloween parties were, were legendary because he had all of these statues with his help from his friend, Rich Carell all yeah. over the place. Friend of the show. And, yeah. Right. And wow. uh, he he just loved horror. He was a big movie fan in general. I used to see him walk around the Hollywood Collectors Show buying posters back in the day. Wow! And um, yeah, so, and he helped. You know, as we mentioned recently on our Batman episode, if it weren't for him hosting the old Batman serials at the mansion, they probably never would have got the idea to do the Batman sixty six TV show. So that's amazing. Yep. There you go. Yep. Well, Matt, why don't you pick somebody here? I am going to pick. James, I haven't picked you yet, right? I think not. Let me try number four. Ooh. (laughs) Number number four. four. My favorite comic book character. Oh, okay. Mm, Wow. I'm going to approach this as a word association (laughs) and go with the first thing that came into my mind. Mm -hmm. And that is the first comic book that I ever followed. Hmm. Which was Werewolf by Night. Ooh, oh, really? Wow. Really? That was the first one that you kind of got yeah. each issue? Huh. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Now, I love wow. Spider-Man and I love all the, you know, I'm, I was mm-hmm. a giant Spider-Man fan. Yeah. But over the years, I have still have this this love for Werewolf by Night. Jack That's Russell. That's good. That's cool. Nice. I, well, Matt, I th- going along those same lines. Yeah, for me, I think it would be Spider-Man because I, I always, I gravitated towards Marvel much more than DC and um, I loved Fantastic Four. I loved even other more kind of obscure characters like Moon Knight, you know, yeah. but but Spider-Man was probably the one that I started regularly getting the yeah. issues. And, and I also remember in the 70s, especially, they would start doing multiple comic lines with Spider-Man. Like sure, there was Web of like, Spider-Man. Yeah, Peter, Peter Parker, Spider-Man, Spider-Man like yeah. you know. So it got kind of got overwhelming after a while, but I do yes, remember. But I remember, like, I really remember the the Gwen Stacy mystery. Sure, yeah, yeah the, the gold whole gold. thing with her yeah. and the Green Goblin. That was one of the first kind of really interesting, compelling comic book storylines yeah. that I followed. It was like, whoa, what is going on? Like, no. I, was I was really, huge, into I was that. so, I was huge. Yeah, yeah. I was really, and and, and, the, uh, and yeah. the art at that time in the '60s, there was John Romita, who right. really, I think, captured what we yes. understand now is that classic look of Spider-Man. Mm. Right. Right. And uh, you know, I'm Steve Ditko before that, who yes, uh, just an innovator, but yes. then I really loved the run during the seventies of Ross Andrew. Oh yeah. Yes. And Ross Andrew yes. was the artist on Spider-Man for, for the longest time. And I believe he's also the artist on Superman versus Spider-Man, which is uh, one of my yes. favorite one shots of all time. You're, and you're right. That artwork, the, the way he did the characters in that particular crossover comic was amazing. Everybody yeah. looked great. Yeah, you're right. That, but yeah, but I mean, Spider-Man just did. He did it for me. I was always look always look forward to the next issues of yeah. a Spider-Man comic. Yeah. Yep. Great choice. Yep. Wow. Nice. Well, for me, I mean, I, yeah, it was Superman. I I I liked Superman and I liked it when Superman was in space and went on his adventures away from earth. And so for me, it was Superman. And it was one of those things where, you know, I had a friend who had a lot of different comics and I thought that, gee, I should just kind of focus on one. So I, I kind of like just, just chose Superman and just kind of stuck with him. So, yeah. So for me, it was Superman. John. I agree with Sean. I think, too, I always loved everything that had a little bit of a sense of humor to it. Yes. Mm. Also, the artists at the time, like the Marvel team-ups with John Byrne. Yes, That he right. drew with, like, Iron Fist. And, yes. Yeah. Uh, like, they were just so, like, as a kid, it seemed like that's where the guys that were going to become bigger artists did those books, and they were so great-looking. Yeah, you know, yeah. even Romita Jr. and those guys. So I, I have to agree. It's weird. Like you go back and you think, like I think I also liked more team stuff. So I did mm-hmm. love where Bendis was the guy who brought Spider Man into the Avengers. Yes. Mm, okay. And yeah. it added a weird thing to it, you know, of yeah. just 
coolness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I, the Bendis stuff is tremendous. Yeah, it was good stuff, man. I just took you, just pulled you into that world, you know, so well. He had no problem um, grabbing B and C level characters and making them become A. And our mm-hmm. whole life, Spider Man was always an A league character. Right. Yes, yes, for sure. It yeah. had to play, so it, it seemed obvious to like it, but they did a lot of really cool stuff with him. Yes, yeah. they did. Yeah. But what about you, James? Well, this was a lim- limited series, but uh, Rorschach from Watchmen. Oh, okay. Ah, yeah. Sure. I, nice. I just love that character. And I guess he's based on the Charlton character, Charlton Comics character, The Question. Yes. Like loosely yeah, inspired loosely. by, right? Yeah. Well, what Alan Moore did with, with that character, I mean, I'm nothing like that character. He's, you know, he's a Let's right-wing vigilante, <laughs> you know. <laughs> But one thing I love, the, the, his name, Rorschach, and he's got the, the mask that changes ink yeah, blot shape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. so cool. And he's also, like, ferociously loyal to his teammates, right? Yes. And yeah, yeah. And he's just, to me, a, just such a badass. And yeah. I love him in that. He doesn't talk a whole lot. He doesn't need to. You know, he speaks right. in, in uh, like, cryptic semi-sentences. And uh, Jackie Earl Haley's brilliant casting in the movie. Yeah. Uh, so there you go. That's that's my pick. If you think and, about it, James, you really are the roar shark of Monster Party. Yeah. Only talks when he needs to. But <laughs> right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I only get out a few words at a time. <laughs> he, he's a vicious killer. Yes. Yeah, you know. <laughs> that's not the thing, too. Is it like that, that would be such brown. a brilliant plot reveal? <laughs> it turns out that James is a vigilante. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. I'm not stuck here with you guys. You're stuck in here with me. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Great. All right. Well, this uh, this was fun. This, this is fun. It, this has been great. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we we could go on and on. Skull or no <laughs> skull. I think we did a good job. I, I, yeah. yeah. I, I think we really did put on a show. You know, we built that <laughs> barn. <laughs> And right. got it on its feet. That's right. And then we burned it all down. The skull would have just slowed you boys down. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah and you're right. right. We, we, you know, That's props, right. but we're so tactile. We need something like that just to ground us. <laughs> right. 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 It'll be, it'll be back. It'll be back. But uh, well, I think yeah, I but... think this was a, this was a a very effective and good way to bring in 2023. I'll say, yeah, agree. Against agreed. all odds, we did it. You <laughs> took the words right out of James's mouth. <laughs> so, 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 John, I I know you've got a lot of good things going on here. What is there anything you can tell our listeners or what to check out? Is there are you in the on world anything? of John yes. Matta? Yeah, check out. You know what? Check out my wife, uh, Sweet Rose Abdu. She's on a show on Hulu called Reboot. Oh, where wow. she got uh, New York Times gave her a glowing review. Nice, nice. On Max on HBO Max. So she's uh, kind of carrying the weight of all the cool stuff in our family. So wow. I was that dude train. Yeah, wow. nice. And of course, you're still doing the Madden napkin. Yeah, I'm doing uh, a couple different things. We're trying to sell a couple things, and uh, I ended up hurting my wrist during uh, where I had to get surgery and I couldn't use my right hand. So I started oh. doing a lot of digital stuff. And then I started doing all these, uh, those chick track books. Remember those? <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then I was adding like family circus heads and Daffy Ducks. <laughs> uh, when and then I got offered an art show of doing just chick tracks. So wow, cool. trying to figure out if that is something I can or cannot do. Uh, but wow. they are, I was just coming back from Arizona and I forgot about these little comic books of hatred. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so it there, cause I think of it more as something more Bible belty, but you know, like well, every all stop, over the place. yeah, every stop, every rest area in Arizona had about seven of them on the floor or by the sink. Right. So I picked up a big track of like 40 of them. So I've done about 10 or 15 to them. And I forgot about how many people it really screwed them up in life where their parents oh, made them give it out and other sure. things. So it might be something fun. So take a look at my Instagram. I think it's Matta at Matta Napkin. 
So I'm trying, excuse me. That was disgusting. I'm trying to figure <laughs> out. What, what are you, Steve Jones? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and definitely doing more Matt and Napkin stuff. And then like everybody trying to figure out what's going to happen in this brand new year of 2023. Yes, oh, brand yeah. new gleaming oh, yeah. future. Yeah, I know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, it was cross. weird getting the news that Joe Biden had a stroke, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, now there, that's just I'm making we're it just up. Joking. I'm a huge fan. I'm uh, just joking. But, I, but again, thanks again for inviting me. This is uh, a staple of my uh, podcast listening to, especially. When I'm walking this guy at 10 or 11 at night, listening to you oh, boys. You're, you're showing your dog. You're showing your yeah, dog. It looks real cute. For, I don't know. What what year are you guys in? Oh, my God. Was it 10th, maybe? <laughs> this is like, this is our, maybe. Yes. Yeah. We yeah, started in 2013, yeah. October 2013. That's right. That's right. Wow. And here we are, 2023. So it's but actually over 10 years. Over this year, it'll be 10 years exactly. I can only listen for 20 more. And then I am. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, what's interesting is that I actually think we like each other more now. Isn't that odd? That nice. like, You know how like, bands so, yeah. usually fall apart? And yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And I think we're we're actually tighter friends than we've ever been. Yeah. Yeah. So. Agree. Well, you can tell it when you're listening. So nice. Matt's not Thank nearly you. as mean to Larry as he used to be. No, <laughs> no. Oh, trust me. I'm sure that I'm sure that has changed. Trust me. <laughs> hey, look, I just wanna I just wanna raise my glass and let's all uh, raise our glass. Uh, yes. Right. The great yeah. John Matta. We love you. Have a wonderful new year, gents. We've all earned it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Totally. Happy new year. Totally. And you know what? You're Cheers. better than a plastic Woo-hoo. skull any day. cheers cheers well guys you know it's been really fun hanging with john and stuff but you know i i have to let you guys know that uh, a few shows ago i made an error i made a mistake on our show no Um, yes and i and i just want to set the record straight i don't know if you guys recall but we were talking about some of the things that are out there and i mentioned the the show called wednesday the series and yes. i and i said that right. oh so, and my my yeah and my daughter really really likes it and okay. you were wrong okay, you were okay. Wrong. Oh, oh, oh. So, so i told my <laughs> daughter this and she got really upset at me so i said okay well why don't uh i don't tell explain that i made a mistake she goes no 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 i want to be on the show so guys what was the mistake I'd you made to- I said that my daughter liked the show Wednesday. Okay. And that was and, incorrect. And apparently, I told my daughter this and that was incorrect. So I have brought my daughter on to set the record straight in what I call, what do the kids think? What do the kids <laughs> think out there? So, <laughs> and Larry, can we, Larry, before that, can we clarify where, where is this? This is a streaming show. This is a Netflix platform? show that's streaming. It's streaming on Netflix. Okay. And it's based on, you know, the Adams family. Wednesday, Wednesday, and, and I believe it's Tim Burton producing it. Yes. Yeah, it was, t- it, he, he created the whole thing, I think. Okay. Yeah. Tim Burton directed it too. Okay. And it's currently on Netflix. Right? It is. Yes. I okay. watched a full episode today i have I, not seen the show yet but yeah okay. i i watched 10 minutes of it and i was mm, but i watched the whole thing today and so i'm I, at least i am ready to talk about this are they uh <laughs> are they half hour way. hour shows an hour yeah right or 45 minutes or something like that okay yeah, yeah they're about an hour yeah so, so what's so what's the gist so, of the show so i present kathy my daughter, okay. with All right. what the kids think. Hello. Hi. <laughs> hey. Okay, so Matt, did you just watch the first episode? I did, yes. Okay, so let me just start off by saying that I really like Jenna Ortega as Wednesday. Me too. I think she's, at, I think she's really good. She's got she the is. look and the voice, but everything else, like, I don't know what Tim Burton was trying to do with this. It starts at okay. Right. So... When I called my dad, I said, you know, it's not that bad because I was halfway through and I, you know, it's it's okay. It's good. But then I watched the entire thing and then that's when my opinion changed. It, it's <laughs> not good. Oh. And I don't know what Tim Burton was trying to do because you could take any character from anything 
and put it in place of Wednesday and the show would still work. The fact that it's Wednesday and the fact that it's the Adams family, that doesn't really play a big part in the show. It could be any character. Okay. Because the plot is so random and it's got nothing really to do with the Adams family other than they're just in it. Right. And things, things walking around. He's just there. I don't know. He, yeah. And um, so yeah, is and it I, like a coming of coming of age story of Wednesday? Like, what no, is it? No, it's it's um it's a bunch of mysteries. So there's one big mystery that Wednesday is trying to solve, and as she's trying to solve that big one, there are there are a bunch of little ones that she solves in like each episode. Right. But because there are so many of these little mysteries, it gets really jumbled up and confusing and then you're like well wait what are we trying to figure out again what's our main goal what is she trying to figure out and there's so many things that are that don't make sense and it's just it would have been better if it was left out what's the newer character than the enid okay there's so wednesday's roommate at her new school her name is enid and she's a werewolf because at this school, it's a school. It's like a monster high. It's a yes. school for oh, okay. yeah, gotcha. vampires, sirens, werewolves, and just kids with random powers. Gotcha. So her roommate is Enid, who's a werewolf. And she's the complete opposite of Wednesday. She's really bubbly. and But it, it doesn't work. It sounds very fake. And it's yep. that kind of character, that really bubbly character, that only really works in cartoons. I don't think that works in like a real like live action show. And she's not it's, very smart. No, it's just like it that doesn't really bother me. It's just that her her personality is so like it's, it's kind of one note. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing else exciting about no her. No depth. No, nothing. Mm. So I just saw one episode, but one thing I got from it, and I love that you use the word random. Because that's what it, it felt like so many things being thrown at me. And so it's like, if, if you like this type of show, we'll give you this scene. And if you, mm-hmm. you know, if you want to see Wednesday kick ass, then here, here's a moment of that, you know? It's, and it's, so it's just so many things being thrown at you. And I do love her. I think she's great. Although I have to say, and you can tell me this, uh, her one note delivery I could see it maybe getting a little tiresome as you got to episode six, but she's, she's so charming. And I think she's a good actress that I give her a lot of credit for actually putting a lot of life in that kind of droll Wednesday role. I don't know. I mean, I think, I think she was pretty good. I think Jenna Ortega is like the only good thing about the show. Yeah. Just her is Wednesday. It, uh, is it, well, is it, well produced does it have good production values is it like does it look like a does it look like you know a Tim Burton Beetlejuice Edward Scissorhands kind of it's, movie with all the darkness and it's the, very beautiful I mean yeah, the scene right. it's got good you know setting and every I mean it's very it's very beautifully shot but plot wise it's just stupid and it doesn't make any sense hmm can I do some spoilers oh, okay spoiler do you guys everyone about- spoiler, <laughs> alert. spoiler alert spoilers okay okay, okay. There's a love triangle with Wednesday Adams. Like, wh- <laughs> what? what can you do with that? You're going to take a girl character who could care less about boys. She does not fucking care about guys at all. And you're going to give her a love triangle with two Wait. very normal boys that really? like her for some reason. I can see them liking her because she's a mystery Right. You know, and she's she's different from any other woman, I guess, in that town or, or girl in that, that town. But I'm with you. I just felt there was just too many things that you have to follow. And it felt desperate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it did. And it, it just Tim Burton had so many ideas and it was just like, OK, bring it down a bit. Let's focus <laughs> yeah. on just a few things for now. And also, can I spoil something Please. at the end? I'm going to spoil something. <laughs> so, gonna spoil, you're going to spoil the end? Well, not not like a big ending, but like... Okay, kinda, something that happens like, towards the end. I mean, it's not like exciting. It's just kind of stupid. 
So okay, go. we're getting to this big mystery, we're, this, this big buildup that we've been waiting for since the first episode. And it turns out that all Wednesday has to do is she has to fight a ghost pilgrim oh who is God. trying to kill all of the outcasts. Outcasts, that's the word that they used. Yeah. And it's just a ghost pilgrim. And he's in it for maybe five minutes. Oh, no. Is it kind you of also, like is it kind of like Harry Potter esque too? Like with the a little bit, right? Because of the students no. in the, in no. the academy, and you know, no, because there's not really any magic. Oh, that's another thing. The fact that all of these characters have powers that they're vampires or werewolves or something that also has no importance to the show whatsoever. They never yeah. really use their powers, and the show could have been done fine without the fact that. They have powers, or they're werewolves or vampires. That right. it doesn't matter. So about the Pugsley thing, because that bugged you. You said, "Why isn't Pugsley?" Oh, okay. Well, I just wish that her family was in it a bit more, because mm-hmm. I don't mind Wednesday getting her own show, but the fact that her family is only in like maybe two episodes, okay, it, that that bothers. It's me. like, why isn't Pugsley in the well, school? Well, I don't know. Wouldn't he be like a bit closer in age to Wednesday wouldn't he also be like maybe a freshman in high school yeah because in the first episode they were seen at the same high school when yes. Pugsley is getting bullied so wouldn't he maybe be like a freshman and she's like a junior or something right why isn't he also going to nevermore is why it is because he- he's less trouble than she is well, he's getting bullied. Well, that's and true. Yeah. Without Wednesday, he's just going to get bullied more. Yeah, he's more. raw meat. Yeah. So why not just put him in Nevermore with Wednesday? And it's the parents that do it, right? Yeah. So. Don't you feel, do you feel that if they kept Wednesday in the normal school, <laughs> that that would have worked better? I have said this so many times to my friends. I prefer the Adams family and Wednesday in a normal, just normal setting. If this show surrounded her at a normal school. Right. Then it'd be like and, the fish out of water. And right. She's like, yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. You have actual natural conflict then. But also yeah. she could still solve a mystery, but in like her normal high school. Like, I don't understand why it has to be like a weird magic high school because that's been done so many times and I don't yeah, care. Yeah. Just give me some fun I, Wednesday I, stuff. It was, it seems weird. It seems like almost like who is the show for? You know? Yeah. It's like it's. Not, See, I, mean, I thought yeah, it was for it. you, but you're saying yeah. it's not for you. Um, they tried to. I mean, they tried yeah. to cater it to like younger audiences. Like, there's a scene where Enid tells Wednesday, like, "Oh my God, you have to get on social media. You have to get on Instagram and TikTok." And I'm like, "Shut up! I hate when shows try to cater to like my." generation in such like stupid ways like oh right God, obvious clunky ways yeah shut right. up like that's, well, that's stu- <laughs> nobody says that in real life right. nobody my age <laughs> right, says right. that this We're is not clearly like, oh my God. by an adult yeah right, right, oh right. my god girl you have to get on instagram nobody says that in real life <laughs> they're trying so hard that's to true. make it appealing oh my god so, it sounds like it almost could have been done better as like animated Maybe like an anime series. No, maybe. I just don't think it should have been done at all. Yeah, I think it <laughs> would have been better that. if it seems like there's a lot of streaming it. shows that should not have been done yeah. at all. Yeah. Ke- yeah, Carrie and I were both watching this pilot, and we got to about I don't know, maybe like the 35 minute mark where they're running around through the carnival or whatever, and uh, we both looked at each other and went, "Are you kind of bored?" <laughs> because yeah. it, it's it's like someone's so trying so desperately to entertain you that they try too hard and you're out but there's like just, nothing there's there. no emotional yeah. cord to, to keep you hooked right and right. yeah i'm with you on all these points i really do feel the same way about it it's the type of thing that you want to like right oh my god i wanted to like right. it so badly i was really yeah. excited for it yeah because yeah. i love wednesday Uh-oh. yeah me too I love the Adams family. I mean, just you yeah, know, me too. In almost every incarnation. Well, yeah. the, the second movie, Adams Family Values, was for me the, the pinnacle of what, what they did. It's just so snarky, <laughs> and especially Wednesday going to camp and everything that happens there. It was yeah, freaking brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah that, that's right. That was a good. That was a good idea. You know, to, right, right. Well, and they guys, do the stunt want... casting. They have like Christina Ricci in it, and you know, yeah. Anyway. Okay, well, I don't. Uh, 
Oh, I don't want to say anymore. But there's so many more things I could say. <laughs> but but look, oh. I, I just wanted to set the record straight. So I hope you liked hearing what my daughter yeah, I want to always. say and especially be, yeah, and what the especially young like kids show like. yeah, a show that all, like you said that was kind of it's kind of tailored made for her generation. But you know, it has to be good. You know, you can't just like. It can't be all cosmetic things, you know. It can't be oh, let's put him in, in a spooky academy. Let's put the other Adams family characters around peripherally. But like, but if you don't have a real basis for a good show and a good idea, you know, it's just why bother? Yeah, I yeah. I talked with a few of my friends about that, and I've expressed my opinions on the show, and they've been like, "Well, Kathy, it's not that serious. This show's for kids." D- okay. And does that mean it still can't be good? Right. Thank like, you. That, that doesn't Thank matter. You. Just because yes. it's yeah. right. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and it's okay. were you talking to them on TikTok? I'm just curious. <laughs> uh, no, I was not. But it like it's okay to not like a big show on Netflix. It's sure. okay to not like it. And it's okay to say that it's bad. And for and people are just like so obsessed with, with, with this show. And I'm like, you guys are idiots because it's so bad are are you listening larry (laughs) yeah it's it's like it's okay to not like a a big show i feel like everyone is pressured to like everything that netflix comes out with and it's a big movie yeah or a big movie movie? maybe it's not that good though you never know Mm -hmm. or even if it's by like a famous director like tim burton it's like it That's does right. not matter they can still make bad things uh, t- hey, t- oh, hey, oh, as yes. far as i'm concerned tim, tim burton has had a very rocky uh yeah, up and down yeah, career yeah. as far as i'm concerned he's made pretty much as many horrible things as good things yeah mm-hmm. yep. but, but you know so yeah okay well hey well, well yeah. Kathy, thank, thank you thank you so Kathy, much yes, yes, for, uh, you have excellent yeah. taste yes thank yes. you mm-hmm. uh, thank well, you guys for so letting may, me come on and uh, maybe, oh, we'll, and kathy we'll have you by the way yes of course we'll have you back by the way, you have to get on Instagram. I'm telling you, you just got to get oh on Instagram. It's, it's, it's where all the kids are. Hey, I'm telling you, yeah. you're not cool until you get on Instagram. We'll okay. see you at the rave. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Guys thank you. are so tubular. Thank you, guys. Oh, no. That is so cool. Thanks. Uh, okay. Thank you. Bye. Word. Thank you, guys. See you, Kathy. Thank you. Time for a listener shout out. Shout out. Shout out. 2023 shout out. Matt, the first shout out of the year goes to you. All right. Well, this isn't exactly a listener, but mm. he does listen to me when I speak to him. <laughs> All right. Well, that's and people okay. listen to him. My friend, stand up comic, actor, you've seen him on, in so many things. He's in a lot of commercials all the time. And um, he's uh, one of my oldest friends. His name is Chip Chinnery. And Chip has written a book on stand-up comedy, on his early days in the 80s of mm. doing stand-up comedy gigs, and he's written a, a memoir. And I'm going to read the Amazon blurb for it. And it says, mm. Chip Chinnery's memoir is a look in front of and behind the curtain at what actually happened his first year as a full-time professional stand-up comedian during the 80s comedy boom. Chip kept a journal and snap pictures at every gig. Some of the comics were or would become household names. Most would remain unsung. Hi, everybody. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) So he's written this memoir and it's, it's amazing. And, and I'm telling you, I've seen this guy's journals and he's, he's a stickler for detail, but uh, Chip is great. He's been in so many movies and sitcoms, commercials. He won a regional Emmy. So he's the real deal. And his book is called Charging Mount Stand Up, My First Year on the Road. And so if you go to Amazon, you can get it in paperback, $21.99. You can get it in hardcover, $54.29. And uh, you can get it on Kindle, $11.99. So there's all kinds of ways to enjoy this wonderful book. This apparently is doing very well. It's uh, and on Amazon's. I think it's like the fourth or fifth highest on their comedy books. Oh, wow. Cool. So uh, it's doing well. But, you know, you got that holiday money and it's just burning a hole in your pocket. Give it to Chip. <laughs> Go for it. 
I, yeah. I like that. Because one of the things that Chip also does is he has a thing called Chip's Money Tips because Chip is very good at financial things and very oh. good with his money. So he'll take your money and he'll, he'll do something grand with it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I like so it. There you go. That's cool. And if you want to do something else grand with your money, uh, you want to spend it on Monster Party merch from our <laughs> yes, eBay you do. store. Yes. That's uh, Monster Party store on eBay, or you can just type in Monster Party Podcast t-shirt, Monster Party Podcast cap, Monster Party Podcast PPE cloth mask, Monster Party Podcast right. shot glass, because all those items are available on our eBay store. And, and. Yeah. Hey, but James. What if we did suspenders? <laughs> suspenders? Suspenders. They'll be coming wow. back. They no, wow. we, we we will bring them back. <laughs> All right. Ooh. Uh, wow. I like it. I like it. Maybe uh aprons? <laughs> mm. <laughs> aprons. <laughs> we can think oh, about it. Yeah. We can we'll think, think about, about it. it. Mm. We're whizzes in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> and and if you buy something, if you buy our merch from eBay. And you happen to be a Patreon member, we will throw in free surprise goodies, courtesy of our friends Jason Lindsay from Biff Bang Pow Toys and Ted Haynes, monster creator extraordinaire. That's right. right. Two big supporters of ours. And I might also throw in some things from, you know, Casa de Weinhold. Ooh. That's right. Yep. Wow. You never know what you're going to get. Well, you know, clearly it pays to be a Patreon member, but what, how does, what, what is this Patreon? Well, I don't, I don't, I, what is this all about? I mean, it's, it's a new year and it's all, a new everything year. I, everything I learned from 2022 is just erased from my memory already. So it's what's all, this Patreon? It's all, all I, you know what? I don't blame you, James, because yeah, uh, it's been a raucous past few years. Last year, yeah, I was hit with COVID for the first time. And oh. so, you know, there's little gaps in your memory. But the one thing, the light <laughs> in my darkness, it's like a lighthouse that kept me on my path was Patreon. Patreon. Knowing that Patreon is this platform where you can get bonus material from Monster Party. We're talking bonus audio episodes, our shows like Monster Party Masterpieces or Larry's Toy Time. We have... These video journals of our trip to Japan. We have these collections of vintage sci-fi and horror stories that were put together by my stepfather-in-law, John Bordeaux. So there's all kinds of things that await you when you join Patreon. And we're always adding. So you got our, I guess you would call it our inventory, our backlog of stuff. And then, you know, we're always throwing something else on the pile. All right. Wow. Well, I mean, it sounds amazing, but I, I, I'm shopping for a new plastic stall, and those can be expensive. They so can be, sure. yes, no. Uh, What's well, a good quality? I, I don't know if this Patreon thing is going to be affordable after that. Well, I've been shopping around for plastic skulls. The one that we <laughs> had, and I guess we still have it, but it's so it's vintage, so it's a little old. So that's mm. going to up the value right there. But then it has. If I'm not mistaken, if I, my memory is serves me, it has light up eyes. Mm. And and, and yes. Larry, do they still light up? They do. Okay. Ooh. Well, there you go. Right. So it's a working. So that, you know, that's a quality plastic skull. But yeah. you know what? If you want something that will light up your eyes, <laughs> it's the knowledge that Patreon only costs five dollars a month. What? Wow, that's that's impressive. You can't you can't get a box of stale three POs for that price. <laughs> <laughs> I hear they're better when they're stale. <laughs> yeah, and freakies just freak me out. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's indeed a deal. So, uh, how does one take advantage of this amazing deal? Well, all you got to do is you go to Patreon.com, you go to Monster Party. You click join, you follow the instructions, and next thing you know, it's like you're in a plastic skull of joy. <laughs> wow. Minus wow. the mold. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, I think our listeners uh, who are not already Patreon members might just make a New Year's resolution to check it out. Oh, That's you right. need to do that. Yes. And hey, let's also remind our listeners that we are on social media. 
We are on Facebook at Monster Party TV, YouTube, also Monster Party TV, Twitter at Monster Party HQ, and Instagram, which I understand everybody needs to be on. <laughs> we are on, and that's also Monster Party HQ. And I'm please, only on it because of Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever platform you're listening to us on, take a moment, write a review. It's been a while since we've ha- had a review, and we would love a new one or two. It was or a new year. Or, yeah. Yeah. So please let please. us know. Please. We would be very interested. Please. And we will read it on the air. Because we love you. That's right. We want you to have that 15 minutes of fame. Well, that's more like 15 seconds, right? Yeah. <laughs> On that note, I am Matt Weinhold. I'm Sean Sheridan. I'm Larry Strohs. And I'm James Gonis. Keep America strong! And if you're gonna have a free-for-all, make it a topic free-for-all. B-Y-O-S. Bring your own skull. <laughs> I don't know how many times, because I've I've done this before where I've left a burner on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and then left the house. Really? Wow. Um, yeah. yeah. And, then, and then remembered or, you know, but Jeez, like. That's scary. There, but but I, I did it. And then. So now I'm so paranoid about doing it again. Yeah, right. Right. I don't know how many times like Ken Daly will tell you. I've called him and said, hey, if you're just in the neighborhood because he has a key <laughs> to our house, could you just oh, go yeah. in there and make sure that I didn't. Try to kill my yeah. cats. And I'm, burn I'm, down like, my house. I'm, I'm like that about locking our front door. I think like, I locked the front door. I think I did, you know, like, cause yeah. you, ch- and then you turn the alarm, but like, it's like, I know. It's, I, I've, I've gotten more and more OCD over the years. Yeah. I don't know why. <clears throat> I know. Wow. We yeah. have a heater in our bathroom, you know, one of the wall ones with the button. And uh, I've made it a point that I have to turn it off whenever I leave the room. Like I've had to give myself rules. Oh, that's, that's cool. good. Yeah. Every time we leave the house, I don't think I lock the front door. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's yeah. a funny thing where your mind starts wandering. I remember the first time a guy said to me, hey, do you ever wash your hair like two, three times and forget? Oh, my God. I was front? just I was just going to say that I forget. Wait a minute. Wash get... your hair two, three times and what? Because you forgot. Yeah, you forget. You wash your hair. My 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 procedure is I wash I wash my face, then my hair, then the rest of my body. But sometimes I forget. Wait, did I wash my hair? Like it's so weird. Wow, I've never it's, heard of this. Oh my god, yeah. Because I yeah. have I have a routine. Leave the cap up after they do Good it. Idea, yeah. So then they look hmm. down. Interesting. See, yeah. I go in and I I I got it down, man. Like really? I go, I got showers <laughs> down. I figured that shit out. <laughs> yeah, I, I go in, you know, you wet the hair, one shampoo, two shampoo, body wash, and then we're out. No conditioner? Yeah. I don't uh, use, conditioner I, in the shampoo. Yeah, I usually try to find, and I usually just shampoo I'm doing once. very well, John. <laughs> I don't trust it. I know that they say it's in there. <laughs> right. That's the next conspiracy theory that will be uh, bandied about, I'm sure, by uh, somebody. I know there's fluoride in them. So well, I'm you. a big fan of uh, your newest podcast, Hygiene Party. <laughs> that'd be good. That'd be good. Yeah. Hygiene and sci-fi and horror. Obsessive compulsive hygiene party. Yeah. I like it. All right. That's cool. Well, we're here right now. I was just uh, thinking of this. Wait a minute. Here's Larry. We got to get him in on this. Okay. Get Larry in on this. All right. Uh, Larry is, I'm sure, like maybe doing something with the phone because we got his name. He's connecting the audio. Does Larry do phone too? Uh, he has. Been, I guess he's been having when some he, when problems. he has to. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it I seems like bad. it's. Con- we got a new. Like I got a really nice mic, and uh, you know, because just because of Rose auditioning so much. Sure. Oh yeah. You know, we got the big balls. The well, I, I don't. I don't. Do know they call them you. snowballs or whatever. Yeah, the Snow- blue oh, snowball no, the, uh, for the lighting. Those Chinese balls. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Which do a great job of diffusing stuff, and then we got it. Yeah. You know that Yeti microphone's pretty sweet too. Yeah. Just for at home, the snow globe's really good too. But yeah, I was thinking from uh, when Matt was telling me all of his stuff. Who do you two dudes view as the greatest 
And you got to take Guillermo del Toro out of it as the greatest celebrity nerd. Great celebrity nerd. Hmm. Oh, yes. Well, that's a that's a big one. Uh, I know. I mean, Mark Campbell's a big nerd and a big collector. And we're talking big names, huge names, right? Any you could it could be, uh, you know, B level celebrity doesn't have to be the hugest. Because I know with Kenny, with Kirk, that guy's got a Costco well, full of. There you go. I mean, that's a good. Yeah, answer yeah. Right there. That's true. And here's Larry Stroth. Larry, can we hear you? I don't know. Can you guys hear me? Okay, we we I can. can hear oh, you. Very oh, nice. Yeah. So, Larry, get this. James has a gas leak in his helm, so he just went off to deal with the gas man. That's the no. story he's actually using. <laughs> Okay. You know, it sounds so odd that, come on, that sounds a little be... fishy. Yeah, yeah I, I think that it's, it's auto erotic asphyxiation time. Because <laughs> it's yeah, a place of maybe. In his mouth. <laughs> okay, can I ask us? Okay, while James is in here, while he's off, <laughs> yes, yeah. Did anybody listen to the Christmas CD that gave us? Uh, Gina has listened to most of it. I, I have, have not, not yet. No. Okay, so my daughter. Okay, I, I hope I don't offend anyone here. But so my daughter and I, we we have to be in the car. We're we're driving all over the place, and I go, let's put in James's CD. We're listening to it. There's so many fucking country music songs on it. <laughs> really? And my daughter and I look at you, go, what the fuck is he's putting all his fucking Christmas? But well, I mean, and music look, I, I now will admit, like there are a lot of past CDs. There's a lot of songs that just are not up my alley. But I don't think that's the point. The point is that it's an all-encompassing collection of Christmas theme songs, and in that way, I think throughout the years he's created a brilliant uh, collection. But it's 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 it is true. Is it, it, is, it, is, it is it always listenable? Though? We're talking about your. Uh, Christmas CDs. You're wonderful. Oh Christmas CDs. <laughs> wow. Well, no, but like <laughs> if again for embracing all genres of music, it's genius. But there's a lot of songs that, yeah, I just would not listen to. You know? uh, I but, guess Larry was saying that there seemed to be a lot of country <laughs> western Christmas songs on this one, James. There's a lot of uh, vintage on this one, and some of them are vintage country. is what you're calling it. Okay, all right. <laughs> uh, yeah, and some of them, some of them are country. Yeah, some, some of them, some of them are. Uh, you think there are that many country? I think there are like three. Are some bluegrass what? or <laughs> what's her name? Uh, Billy. I don't know. Lynn, Lynn Anderson. There's a song about mistletoe by Lynn Anderson who did Rose Garden. It sounds like Rose Garden. That's kind of um, country, isn't it? It was the first, it was one of the first music, Christmas music CDs that my daughter and I got angry at as we were wow. driving. <laughs> oh, man. But James, hey, but James, James, I, pre- I mean, thank you. I, every year we, I look no, forward to the CD. Yeah, we love them. Yeah. It, it is, you should put together like a mega set of like every, I mean, you've been doing it for what, the last 10, 15 years, if not longer? 30, 30, 34 years straight. I got 34 a, years putting out a CD. 34 years. That's well, they incredible. started with tapes and then in 98 they started with that's CDs. That's yeah. amazing. Tapes. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. And but I, it's I, all what what they have in common is it's just stuff I like. That, so did I like, give you like, did I give you my punk Christmas playlist? I, I got that. Uh, we, we've talked it was about a whole bunch got, of punk songs. It. No, no, you no, not what? the I'm, Halloween one. Oh, okay. <clears throat> No, there's I, a Christmas one. I thought I gave you a whole playlist just, because to, to help you with maybe, you know, right, right. not having so much country Western on them. Well, I know the, <laughs> the, the, the yobs and the, the darkness. The yobs, uh, yes. But, right. but yeah, I, I need to I need to look again. I will uh, good, I will send it. you what I have. Hey, Larry, cool. yeah. Larry, uh, yeah. your your sound is a bit tenuous. It's It seems to come in and out. Well, here's the problem, guys. I'm going to let you in on a little secret here. Actually, <laughs> no secret. So I brought my computer home to to San Jose because I had all these Zoom meetings. Mm-hmm. And it's been real windy here. It's been rainy. Uh, and and the internet, here, it's spotty. There might, there's a chance that all of a sudden it'll freeze and then... It, it's more, away. yeah. It's more your audio when it's, you know, you're a little choppy video wise, but that's okay because it doesn't matter. But it's really just uh, a matter of 
if you're I can we can try and do I can try and do computer mic. You want to do it as computer mic wise? Let's see. Let's see how that sounds. Yeah, let's just to see. Yeah. Can you hear me? I can't yeah. hear you. Keep, keep, keep talking. Speaking. Talk a little bit. Okay. I would have to. Okay. So far, it's better. I, so far, it is better. Yes. Are you preparing to speak? What's now? I'm Uh-oh. going to list all my grievances against the <laughs> He's pulling him down a giant Wait. 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 Wow. I'm doing... It's looking like a found footage film now. <laughs> This is like the worst be dragged off movie ever. Dragged oh. off out of frame, screaming. Yeah, we just <laughs> we talk about hygiene and uh, the shower, and then all of a sudden we all turn to the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. How's this? Is this any better? Yep, yes. Talk talk for a few sentences. Yeah. All right. So I want to see if this is any better. This is. Mm. I just have. Uh, Speakers. It's kind of the same. And it's, yeah. yeah, it's just it, it does it, that. It's like oh, I, 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 break up like that. Yeah, but so must be the put, Wi-Fi. Put, put, well, put can, your headphones can, back in. Put your headpiece thing back in. The headset, and then at least your voice will be clearer. Yeah, yeah. My we'll just we'll, maybe, we'll, we'll, maybe I don't. Work maybe, I don't maybe I don't say that much on this episode. <laughs> no, we don't that. We'll, we'll just make we'll just contest. What did Larry say? You don't want that. All right. I'm What's walking this? if I don't get 100% Larry on this. <laughs> <laughs> That's some good ones. I got the uh, the Jerry Lewis one here, signed by Jerry Lewis. Ooh, wow. Ooh. Oh, Family Jewels, yeah. Nice. As he signed it, he goes, you don't see those fucking credits anymore. Written, produced, and direct by <laughs> <laughs> really? That's awesome. As his balls were hanging out of his tight, tidy whitey shorts. No. How long, how long ago was this? Where was it? Uh Martin Short Show. Oh, and oh, said, oh okay. Uh, he said, Don't come in this room at all. Do not come in when I'm with Jerry Lewis. So I opened the door up and I said, <laughs> Marty, the Armenian mob, I owe these guys eight hundred dollars cash. They're gonna fucking break my legs unless I get some <laughs> help. And uh, oh, hey, it's Jerry Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Did he enjoy that? Uh, I don't think Jerry Lewis enjoyed anything that he didn't say, and Marty's <laughs> that way too. Yeah, I yeah, see. I got it. Gotcha. Yeah. Two guys that are really big fans, but you know, yeah, Short yeah. was nice yeah. enough years ago to give me the quote of why for my book. So <laughs> I'm always on Team Marty. <laughs> 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 and then we saw him at the SAG Awards, and he could not have made me look like a bigger deal in front of people. Oh, that's oh, cool. That's nice. So, you know, I, again, it's Martin Short, you know. <clears throat> yeah, it's like yeah, going yeah. like the guy you worked for, you know, when you're in high school, and you're going, what was that guy like? I don't know. He was an adult. I was a stupid kid. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Uh, got- yeah, my Christmas was perfect. E- yeah? Very, very easy. Just mostly me and Rose. We didn't leave town, so I Mm. think like everybody, if you stay here, it it was was weird, though. L.A. wasn't or all this area used to be so dead during Christmas. Right. But people are leaving. But it's I guess that's how many people are here now. Oh, yeah, yeah. We stayed. We stayed around because Terry had COVID. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 So we had a very relaxed Christmas. I still miss like going to the Cinerama Dome on Christmas, you know. I yeah, don't, really, uh, just going out. I, I know. I guess it's going to come back at some point, maybe. I don't know. It's, I don't know. Everybody maybe. looks for Steven Spielberg to fix everything, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> they used to. I don't know anymore. Yeah, I, I haven't looked for that in the past 25 years, <laughs> but... Uh, Remember they did that for the silent movie theater? They wanted Spielberg or Johnny Depp to buy it. Oh, was that oh, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. hearing that. Yeah. So yeah, is, I, that, I, is that I, still around? Is that still open? That place? It is, although I don't know. I don't know what the management is now, or what they're. Yeah, I don't know if they even have a schedule of screen movies. Is it a I, little less rapey? Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, hopefully a little less. A little less Me Too ish. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Or more Me Too ish. However yeah. you want to. What yeah. are you trying to say, Sean? <laughs> See, I, I thought I tell thought, Jeannie to go get you a cup of coffee. <laughs> I thought I thought movie going 
physical movie going at theaters is going to suddenly come back in droves with the miraculous release of Avatar 2. It's that doing every, okay. every, well, I know it's doing very well. I'm sure Larry will attest to. But <laughs> if, if the idea is that visually it's a movie you have to see in the theaters, that's getting people into theaters. But uh, I don't know. Doesn't work for me. I would never pay money to see that movie. (laughs) That's what I say. But like uh, reading some things about how it's just, you know, visually amazing, but like that it's nearly not much of a movie, but it's kind of the same thing as the first one, just more and longer and, you know, better effects. But I don't know. Who needs to know any more about that universe? Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. I I don't. But, uh, you know, I know there's going to be another one. And then he says, but I could make Five more of them. Well, there's especially at least two more. Yeah. At least two more. But yep. it's like, it's like, wow. why? Why does he want to stay in that world? Is he just completely lost? Is because he jumped the shark? I mean, he, he used to be a really creative, interesting filmmaker. Now. I know. It's weird. It's weird. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, would, I defend the abyss all over the place. Oh, yeah. yeah sure. Absolutely. Yeah, I guess I you surround yourself around a bunch of people. You you can create your own reality around you, and I would guess yeah. that's what Cameron's really good at doing. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, it's like Lucas. I'm sure it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Lucas must have been like Max Cady uh, <laughs> when, when they showed the Phantom Menace. You know, he's just in that front row. <laughs> <laughs> so what the fuck? But I enjoy. Who would have thought? John Favreau would have done so many things that I enjoy. Yeah. Well, I did like Swingers. Loved I love it. Swingers. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah, Swingers is great. Yeah. Every movie he's directed, I've enjoyed. Uh, I really enjoyed Mandalorian. A lot of it. Yeah, yeah. me too. Mm-hmm. You know, I like that. Like, you're going like, wait, he's just doing Lone Wolf and Cub. Nice job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and, and you know, to do it. I'm happier with the direction that he's going in rather than Taika Waititi right now. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about jumping the shark, man. That Thor movie is about as awful a time as you can have. I think, you know, it was too, is like, it was like the whole movie was just like giving a finger to Marvel fans, you know, that's what I felt. Yeah. Oh, look, we don't take any of this shit seriously at all. And you paid to see this movie. That's basically what it is. Yeah, yeah. It's the, and it's like, and it's um, shitty comedy too. That's the yeah, thing that yeah. always gets me. But we've been down this road a million yes, times. Yes. Wait, we were talking, Ken Daly and I were talking about how inconsistent Guillermo del Toro is. True. Hmm. I, you Anybody root for him. Pinocchio? You root for him all taste, over the place. For the taste that he has, he knows what's good. But it, it, it seems like he seems very 50-50 to me on things. Sure. Like, yeah. Certain things, yeah. Nightmare Alley. Boy. That cabinet of curiosity. Wow, that was a couple of those were hard to get through. You know, it's funny you said that, John, because we've been watching those and we're maybe like about five or six in. And I really en- we've really enjoyed the first three, maybe. And then yeah. and then for ironically, the two episodes so far we've seen that are based on Lovecraft stories, Dreams of the Witch House and Pickens yeah. Model. We're really yeah. disappointing. I don't know. First of all, Pickman's model. I don't know what the fuck. How do you fuck thinking. up Pickman's yeah, model? Exactly. It's such a simple, basic, great the idea. The Night Gallery did it. The Night I thought. Mm. I thought. Okay, I'm going to see. I, I'm going to see Guillermo del Toro's cool, updated version of that Night Gallery episode. Nope. He takes it nope. in all these weird, muddled directions. It doesn't even make any sense. Well, and that's like, yeah. don't be afraid of the dark, man. Talk about yes. sucking yes. all yeah. the fun and atmosphere but, but, out of that but, story. But like that and the Dreams of the Witch House also, which was very, very literal and like, it's just, it was like, just, it's just sat there. And it's weird because all the episodes before that, I really liked. There were short, different short stories. Some were like original, some were based on older ones. I, I I was like, this is this series is in a roll. I'm really enjoying them. And then those two are the last two we've seen. And like, wow, what a disappointment. So I think there's like maybe three or four left. So for the most part, I've really enjoyed the series, but those two, wow. I That's was re- when I bailed. And did you notice in the beginning he barely talks in front of it? All right. Okay. Here you go. Here's the Yeah, you're one. right. You're right. Yeah. Away. I mean, I, you know, I know what you're thinking. Who invited Michael Moore? Okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Did it's anybody a, I mean, see his uh, new Pinocchio? No, I'm curious, though. I, I want to see it. How about you, James? No, I, I downloaded it. I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. Okay. 
Yeah, I want to see it. But hey, have me... you guys watched Inside Number Nine? Yeah, not yet. not yet. You brought that yeah. up last show, but yeah. How that, great is show. that show? Great. I mean, it's like at its worst, you admire the attempt. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. Those guys are fantastic. They really are. Gentlemen. Yeah. And you go through all those guys' body of work. Yeah. It's all certainly speaking to my sweet spot. It's exactly the type of thing I like. In fact, that League of Gentlemen Christmas special <laughs> wow. is maybe one of the greatest Christmas specials of all time <laughs> because it's the Halloween special. <laughs> all right. That's cool. Oh, here's Larry. Let's see. Uh, let's right. see what happens. Larry. Connecting to audio. Connecting to audio. Did yeah. Larry have to go out and buy a phone? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Hey, uh, first of all, it looks better. Yeah, the, the connection looks much better. Yeah. Hey, did he Larry? go buy a burner phone from the uh, 7 <laughs> It's like the wire. Yeah. <laughs> well, when Larry's not uh, running his crystal meth business, <laughs> hey, oh, I was uh, here with Larry. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, Omar. <clears throat> Aww. Yeah. How's yeah. it going, Larry? Can you talk, hey, Larry? <clears throat> yeah. Oh my God! Can you, can you guys hear give, me? Give, okay? give, give, give us a yeah. poem or something. Yeah. Give us a couple lines. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Much, better. Much, much better. Much better. Just make sure you have your your batteries charged on your phone. You're good to go. My battery's okay. charged. <laughs> <laughs> no, you you sound good. You sound good. Good, good. Yeah. All Much right. better. Okay, let's have fun. Woo-hoo. All right, let's do yeah. it, man. It's a new year. Remember, this is a new year. It's the future. I love it. I You know, we're all in our nerd hovels. We got... Yeah. John is I got my uh, dog. holding his dog Yay. like he's, a, like oh, he's the, the most cuddliest Bond villain. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> yeah. So look, I don't want to. I yeah. I don't want to delay us any longer anymore. Oh, no. But but since, like Sean said, since the last time we did this was in 2022, this has been dropped in 2023. Correct? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So, so we, we, let's not do, says our New Year's. So so we're not going to do something like Matt would go. We're not actually recording in the new year. We're actually recording before. No, can if we you, not if do you that? don't if you don't want to do that, that's fine, Larry. Yeah, I yeah. No, I, I agree. I agree. Let's make it like this is the this is the new year. New year. Twenty twenty three. I certainly I'm certainly in a mental place of wanting to be away <laughs> from now. <laughs> right. Yes, totally. Totally. Who would have thought the president would be in a coma? So, <laughs> Bitcoin is people. <laughs> so we have we have topics in the skull. We still have a lot of. We topics, still have right? a lot of topics. Probably a lot of uh, John still in there too, right? I hope so. Oh yeah. Who Wait has a the... minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Who is the skull? Wait a minute. Are we topic free for all? We don't have the skull though, right? It's not at the year. <laughs> not, not unless you guys wanna not unless you guys wanna wait for me to drive to Los Angeles and get it. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is classic. This oh, is I have amazing. six hours. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, no, All right. Wait. So what are we doing? Wait, wait, wait. Okay. So wait. Because okay, Hold look on. I I didn't realize we were gonna do this well, no, Matt, um, John, before I left. Los Larry, it's Angeles. not your fault. Yeah, of course. The day before, you know, a few days yeah. before Christmas. Yeah, no, we, we, right, we only right, decided right. on this. Hey, yesterday. let let me bring that skull with me. Yeah, I and I, I wasn't <laughs> thinking for some for some reason. I thought I thought it was going to be who would win again. And I'm sorry. God, yeah, well, I'm so. We, why don't we, we do this? It's... Why don't we all take a moment, write down five topics, and then we can maybe go like, all right, Larry, pick your topic. You know, we all pick each other's topics. Got it. Um, Does that sound all right? Yeah, we have to pick our we have to pick our own topics. Well, yeah. So it's like no, no, you pick somebody else's topics because you know what your topic is. Well, you just said you just Matt. You just said write down five topics. We can't share our topics. We We, we have to read our topics. Well, we could do okay if we have. Let's say we write down five topics. If you if you're thinking. To keep it a little bit of a mystery, when we get to, let's say, it's my turn to pick, we each write down numbered five topics, right? Then I go, okay, yeah. it's my turn. Okay, uh, I'm going to go with 
John's topic number three. And then he reads it and then we do it. And then John goes, oh, the pig, Sean's oh. topic number one. So, we, OK, I mean, that's in a way to do it. I think we should definitely still explain to our viewers what's going on, because we usually do the yes. whole thing with the skull and the ritual and all that. You can like you can go. We told Larry and the fucker left well, no, the skull. No. Or, we okay. could, or we could or uh, we that, could. That, that works just as well as anything else. <laughs> Let me let's uh, I'm going to grab some paper. And why don't we write? Uh, let's write six <laughs> just to be on the safe side. I mean, is oh, that okay. is this the best thing? Just is this the best I mean, approach? Do you think? Does anybody have any best? other ideas? Well, no, no, alternatively, if we could do us just a smackdown, get some books, put our finger in the book. We just we kind of did that not too long we, ago, though. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I I like this idea that Sean came up with. And, okay, and we also like and we can't we can't really do letting anything goes because we kind of just no. did that. Too. Right, right. Okay, hold yeah, on but, one second. I'll be right back. Okay, I, I gotta talk to the gas man. <laughs> oh, ouch. Okay, I'm gonna. All right, I would say, if possible, have something about a movie, something about a toy, something about a yeah. TV show, you know, just some variety. Is this becoming part of the show? It really should. <laughs> <laughs> In the Patreon, behind the scenes, you know, this you know, John. You know, John, I will say this. Look, man, you know, I'm glad if, if all this shit had to happen, I'm glad it's happening with you. Yeah. Yes. We consider yes. a friend of the show. And you it's know, fantastic. God, God bless you, man. And I love I mean, when it, this is go off the rail and are No, fine. you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> I hate it. I hate I it. I love it. I hate it. It's 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 one of the worst. Like if I'm if I'm watching a puppet show or something. And a little puppet's head falls off or something. I'm like, <laughs> the puppet that. show is wrecked. You know, that, that's or, happened to me so many times in watching puppet shows and the puppet's head <laughs> falls off. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I live right down the street from that marionette theater, and they're still Bob Barker. <laughs> Wait, yeah. the new one? Isn't isn't there a new one, new place? Yeah. You're, you're by are. the new place? Yeah. A uh, buddy of mine, Carl Hurlinger, is a ventriloquist and is always doing shows there. Oh, that's good for him. That's good. Yeah. So it's got, I listen, it's good to hear anybody is still, you know, that they hadn't sold the building or. Yeah. Whatever. Oh, all those topics, man. I'm is everybody else my- done? No no. 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 Need about 45 more minutes and I'll be ready. Yeah. <laughs> Just trying to think of ones that I haven't already done. Yeah, no, I know. I have no idea. Matter. I'm just trying to think of fresh stuff. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> doesn't matter. We yeah. have to do a show. God damn it! <laughs> almost. I'm almost there. Oh, it's coming. It's so close. <laughs> oh no! I got five. I'm out. All right. I got. Rose just I'm, did I'm, Dictionary of all shows, where she had to draw stuff. So she. Oh didn't... yeah. Oh really? Seven of them in one day. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah. Wow. wow. Just wow. an Mitchell. So that's a lot of work <laughs> just with that. Is that Bride of the Monster poster behind you there, John? No, it's uh, Robot Monster. Robot Monster? Robot Monster. Wow. Is it an original? No. Some of those things are just too high and She got me a... Uh, Aping Hollywood, which is an original, and that was right. a lot. That was a yeah. lot of dough. Then you got to yeah. get the special glass, and yes, if you want to do it the right way, and at some point I go, eh. no, John, but you I, do it I, the right way. You're I love this one. Way. It didn't have to be like, even if it was so much money, it was like when I finally sold my whole comic book collection. I just <gasps> knew I'd have to. Yeah, but it would have. I would have had to rebag everything and get it taken care of a lot better. And it was, I think it was more of a chance that, you know, there's going to be a leak in the house somewhere or. Sure. Mm-hmm. I had a great run and uh, Jerry Duggan got a hold of me with a guy who lived in Pasadena. So he came to the house. And of all things, like I had first Punisher, a lot nice. of John. Oh, wow. I had a lot of really good things that Miller. Wolverine. I had some really fun things. Uh, a lot of first stuff in it. But of all things, Walking Dead went for the most, which I was shocked by. Oh, really? Wow. Hmm. So it was like I had, I don't know, eight or nine long boxes. And I don't know, it was like 
a little over eighteen hundred bucks cash. That's not um, that's not bad. So it wasn't, uh, you know, it was every guy left Philly when I was there. All the comics sold their Sandman collection to mm. pay for. I mean, that was when you could make money selling. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. And the other thing would be if I did it piecemeal too, I'd have to get everything graded and then deal with nerds. Uh, <laughs> yeah. so that's why. Sure, that's yeah. why I always do the disclaimer. That's why I always go. Yeah. I am not an expert. Uh, yeah, this right, is how right. it looks to me. Check out the pictures, and uh, there's no refunds. I, yeah, they they just really jump in your shit hard, and I get it. It's uh, you know, but I was never one of those guys that bought five books every time they came out or three books. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, we all got we all got fucked with that. Or every guy that I've heard, that's always a heartbreaker when you hear a guy's collection got destroyed in a storage facility. Yeah, yes. really. I've, I, I mean, you guys have had to hear that story a hundred times each, probably. Mm-hmm. But the guys that I know that every time I heard it, I went, oh, man. And yeah. A lot of them had them in tubs and everything, too. But they all thought that they were going to make money on it, too. Yeah. I don't know too many. Do you know guys that have made a lot of money with their collections? No. No. no uh, I mean, it's always, well, ha- it's always been. Larry's it's made always some been, money. It, it's not like it's something where, who I can I can retire now. You know? Yeah, it's, yeah. It, it, it's, it's not it's, the 40-year-old virgin myth. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, hasn't, because, uh, hasn't Brian Peck kind of did pretty well selling stuff? I, that was I, movie memorabilia that he stole from. That's Ted, a, that's right? true. That's true. <laughs> right. yeah. yeah. Wow. Well. Yes. Yes. And, uh, but I've yeah, never. That's... I guess I've never. Well, first, I've never. I. I don't. I just don't collect stuff with the idea of selling it. You know, like I never. No, there's, I have no one piece that I think. Oh, I can sell this and make money. You know, if there's something I don't like anymore, I did in the past sell stuff on eBay just because I didn't. It was really just to make space, have space, and not have to store it. You know, it's not yeah. like I. I mean, I don't think I have any. I maybe have a handful of pieces that are valuable, but not like, not something that would like you know. Yeah, it's, I could sit back and relax and not have to work because I sold something. I, I. I don't think I have anything like that. But I, I wouldn't sell anything anyway, though. It's the thing. I like passing stuff down to younger kids that That's, are just yeah, it's great. To get into stuff, and you get to see their eyes light yeah. up. You're going yeah, that, I do that too. Yeah, I mean, I I've given away a lot of things to like David Weiner's kid and yeah, right. That's, uh, yeah, that's and that cool. makes me feel good. But you know, there's certain things like my films, the 16 millimeter films. Yeah, I've done really well with those because I had way more than I realized. There's some of this stuff that I was given that I'm never gonna watch this. I for a while I had right, like right. Edison's Silent Uncle Tom's Cabin. Hey, everybody, <laughs> hey, come on over hey, for a when film are we party. have that, yeah, that yeah. party? Yeah. Don't you have that every, every, Christmas, every Christmas we come over and watch that. Have a Uncle big party. Tom's Cabin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's a lot of stuff like that. You know, you're like, what am I doing? Why am oh I holding on to this? Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, I'm um, ready. All right. We all so, ready. So we're doing yeah. six, right? We, yeah. Uh Matt has five. Just remember that. Okay. That's okay. I, I, That's I, okay. I'm, 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 I don't have five good ones. Well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> look, look at where we are right now. As, <laughs> as, as we go, we have to do a show at John, some point. Yeah. As we go John, along, we may think uh, John, of some I'm just things. Thrilled. You know? Yeah, John, I'm just thrilled that you're here and that you're buried with us. Awesome. Yes. God bless you, man. I, was really still, mad. I still listen and, every night when I do late night walks with my dog. It's always with Monster Party. <laughs> oh, nice. How do you like that? That's oh, awesome. thank you. That's awesome. And it That's can awesome. only go to nine hours each show. So <laughs> right. It can only be longer because I usually do about a half hour or so. And then I turn around. Sure. We got you for the rest of your life. My neighborhood, Thomas Middleditch lives like four houses down from me now. Wow. The guy from, uh, what was it, Silicon Valley? Right. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. That's cool. And I guess he just did. Ken Daly, I guess he's a TV guy too. Oh, he did a the nerd, nerd poker. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like, oh, cool. I, I don't know cool. whether he really good. He he knew the rules and he knew enough that he didn't get lost during it. Yeah, m- more than I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't That's completely cool. understand it. Yeah, unless know? I can jump on a square 
with my dice, uh, I'm I'm out. <laughs> Unless I can build a Rube Goldberg mousetrap. <laughs> right, right. All right. Are we ready right. to do this? Yeah, I think we do. And we should let John go first to pick from whoever. And I think right. that way, so if you're one of your questions in this pick, just cross it off so that if if like Larry then asks one, he is the same one, you t- we just go, to, oh, that one was already picked. Yeah, I think that's fine. What's our name for this? So uh, topic free for all. The skullless version. Uh, no. Disaster. No, no. Topic free for all. The apology. No, 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 the multiverse or something or like, uh, the multiverse, what do you call it? Uh, It's like, there's many, it's it's like, what do you call it? I'm unplugged or it's naked, unplugged. (laughs) No, Uh, no, Uh, I mean, I would say yes, but not, we don't normally have a swear word in the thing. Um, yeah, uh, topic free for all. What a fucking way to start the new year. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm kidding. No. Whoa. You said you the skull. You just you just froze there. That was weird. You, you went, no. <laughs> um, topic. Okay, last one was called Wrath. Uh, no, last one the, was called. What do we call it? The cursed edition. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's gotta be something else like uh how about apocalypse. Well, we've done we've done <laughs> no. the, we've done the, the annihilation. We've done the uh, wrath of topic free for all, unplugged or uh, what's the word for like you know, like let loose, like uh, the street version or like the uh, uh, the, the the forbidden dance, the forbidden no. <laughs> the, the uh, forbidden. See, the, but we're we're missing the forbidden this. zone. <laughs> um, we're <laughs> missing the skull, so should it be something like? You know, yeah, the Larry happy. version or no, uh, I, it's I, I'm fine to go with something else. No it's skull, fucking no, no skull, di- no, no, no skull edition or skull, skull yeah, free. Uh, skullless or um, the skull free edition, the skull, skull dash free edition, the skull free. Wait, edition. You, you or, what are you editing this now? Skull like, da- dash <laughs> semicolon, <Yes>. colon, <laughs> Um, that skull duggery. Ooh, I like that skull duggery. Uh, skull duggery topic, version. Topic free for all. Skull skull duggery edition. How about just topic free for all? What the? Mm. <laughs> it doesn't have, have enough no fun at doesn't, all. No, but, it, no, but it's got to no, have it's, it's it's dramatic. Have no punch. You're no, you're a writer. That, you're, blah, blah, blah. You know, you're a writer. It's like, what the? I mean, that's that's old hat. Come right, on. We, 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 okay, it's right. Extreme edition. The skullless edition is fucking, uh, the, yeah, the kids. It's better than what the? <laughs> is it? I like the skullduggery edition. No. Skull duggery. What is that? That doesn't that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, then how about this? The skullless edition. No. <laughs> Okay, let's make <laughs> Matt happy then. Skull, skull. It's got to be something. I know there's something I just can't think of. Skull, uh, topic free for all. First out of all, think, 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 about, think about it as a new year, There you too. go. Out of our skull. Out of our skulls, uh, right? Out of our, our skull. No, it's not skulls. It's skull. Oh, well, yeah, it's true. You're right. You're right. Out of our Top, skull. Topic free for all. Out of our skull, 2003. Edition. 2003. No, yeah, that you, works for me. Well, add, what are you gonna have, Sean? You want to add some dates? <laughs> you know, latitude, okay. longitude. What so, so it's Jesus topic free Christ. for all. Topic free for all. Out of our skull. That's good, right? That works for me. Yeah, yeah. Topic that free for all. With you, Larry. Colon space. Like out of our skull. Out of our fucking <laughs> skull. Let's go. Yeah. No. 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 There's no fucking skull. Okay. And out of our skull. And are you? And Matt, are you gonna explain what happened? Or are you going to say, Larry, why don't you No, I'm just going to go on and we're going to, yeah. Wait, so it's topic free for all out of our skull, right? Yes. Okay. okay. Out of our skull. 2023. (laughs) With apologies to, okay. Uh, Hey, John, thanks again, man. No, okay. 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 But we can also say it's like the hustle bustle of the holidays. We're all traveling. We didn't, we've lost the skull in the process. You know, it's why are you telling me this now? Save it for the show. (laughs) No, that's what I'm saying. You can say, okay. Oh, now you're telling me now. now. (laughs) Holy fuck. Uh, (laughs) All right. Let's go. Let's go. This would be good because I can find a good picture of a skull to cheese. It'll be good. Yeah, I love it. 
Okay. No, let's work on the graphics right now. Okay. Let's do it. Wait, take, take, take 10 minutes. Let's figure, give me five ideas for the graphic and then go.